attend to the issues as raised by those communities. Uh, yeah, that progress report is very critical for us because this is the matter that we said we'll keep on following up. And then we'll also hear the feedback from the community members, the petitioners themselves. Uh, and then that's how we're going to end this meeting uh, today. So basically, this is just a follow-up. I think colleagues, you could have perused your committee, committee report then. If not, Shirin, you can also send it back to the committee members. But this is the method that we, we submitted to, to the National Assembly. Uh, this is the method that was also submitted to the National Assembly. The other issue will recall this is the matter. We had also resolved to take, do a, 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 an oversight visit to the municipality. Unfortunately, when we went to meet those co community members there, they went, what councillor then took us to a different venue, wherein you recall colleagues, uh, there was people that were there attacking the petitioners to say, why did they do that? Uh, uh, why do people make petition? It's a, and we try to explain in that meeting to say, every citizen has got a right to, to petition parliament if they are not happy or satisfied with the level of service that a, any public institution is providing to them. But colleagues, you'll remember we were both in oversight when we were taken to a room meeting we were there. So that's why maybe we felt then we need to then again call all of you based on that matter because the oversight a visit could have resolved all the issues as raised. But I've got reason to believe that uh, since our interaction with the municipality, there could be substantial progress to that effect, which the municipality will be able to share with us. And then we'll also then hear it from the petitioners themselves. So it won't be our usual petition where in the MP responsible for the constituency will present the facts because we've already dealt with this matter. Then uh, it will be just for the municipality to give us the progress and then feeling which then the, 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 the petitioners will then have to confirm whether the, the progress in the, they can see it is visible or not. Maybe then there can be further commitments that the municipality could be able to make so that we're able to also report back to the house. So basically that's where we are. Uh, in the absence of the mayor, I suspect a speaker can introduce the, the matters. And then uh, I think the councillor Savelo is best place to then deal with the actual progress reports as is the portfolio head responsible for those matters as we raise with us on the, on the petition then. Can I hand over to you? Uh, speaker. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Good evening to colleagues and uh, officials from Kota, from Kota in the province. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for your introduction. Uh, I'm not very sure whether the mayor is still coming. I haven't heard, but uh, I know he will be joining us. But um, I would like to hand over to, before I, 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 I allow the acting city manager to speak, I will allow Councillor Tandukolo uh, to have some remarks from his department. And then I will, will allow the acting city manager to lead his team. Over to you, Councillor Sabelo. <clears throat> Thank you very much, honorable speaker. Uh, Can greetings. We can we put our videos on, please, uh, Councillor Savelo? <laughs> okay. 
Um, uh, let's put the cameras on. Let's do that, please. Let me try. Okay. There, there you go. go. Yes. Um, it's a city shirt, né? It's a city regalia. Do you, do you also <laughs> want me to, to put my camera on, chair? When you speak, because your time is passed, I, it will be given an opportunity as chairperson of council to speak again. You must do oh. that, né? All sure. right, all right, chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Councillor Savello. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair of the Portfolio Committee. Greetings to the Speaker of our municipality, Councillor Wizwetusi. Greetings to all the honorable members of this portfolio committee in our National Assembly, and also greetings to the officials present in this meeting today. Chair, I just want to make a short summary that indeed we have received the um, petition that comes from uh, Ward 52 uh, members of the community uh, through the National Assembly. And we have therefore put in place programs and systems as the municipality um, to address the concerns of these members of the community. We have been implementing some projects in the ward and some are at completion stage and some are, are, are still at uh, the inception stages. The report of the municipality will be presented on our behalf by mm. the chief operations officer, whom we had requested to consolidate all the reports from all the units um, which were responsible for the projects. The um, chief operations officer is Mr. Musa Mpele, who will then lead us through the report. Um, through you, Honorable Chair, I would like to hand over to Mr. Musampele. Before I just hand over, I do wish to send mm -hmm. an apology on behalf of His Worship, the Mayor of Eteguini, Councillor Mkulis Kaunda. Uh, he did request me to send his apology. He will no longer be able to make it to the meeting due to other prior commitments which have been made by his office, but he then requested myself and the speaker to be present in the meeting uh, and to lead the discussions. Uh, I think Mosambel has now shared the report. Through you, speaker, through you, chair, uh, if you allow me, uh, my former leader in the ANC Youth League, if you, yeah. if you yeah. will allow me, <laughs> um, I, I would like <laughs> To hand over to oh, oh. thank you very much. I see I've, I've touched the, the whip net. of the portfolio committee protect me from uh, Councillor Savello, please. Honorable Direco, you need to protect me. Uh, both the that's chair that's and Councillor Savello, you are all protected. Thank oh, you. thank you. Any is member of the youth league. Can we proceed? Uh, COO uh, Musamben. Can you then deal with the issues as raised? Over to you, COO. Uh, greetings, Madam Chairperson. Uh, greetings to the members of the Portfolio Committee, the Speaker of Council of Fetegwini Municipality, Councillor uh, 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 Mamwezi Wetusi. <clears throat> Councillor Tandukolo, the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Infrastructure, our colleagues from <clears throat> provincial. We are only seeing uh, some light there. We can't see the face there on the some side. Light. Of it. Yeah, there's no person there. The only thing that we can see some light there. Hey. As long as there is light, Madam, Madam Chairperson, at least it's not dark. I'm trying to press the button on showing the video, but it is not okay. showing. Uh, okay. Really, then, yeah, maybe. Make it's your slide full then. Make your slide full. Ne? Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. There you go. Uh, 
Uh, greetings to the colleagues, greetings to the uh, colleagues from the city who are part of this meeting here, and greetings to the members of the community of Ward 52 that have, that have joined us. My name is Musam Pele. I'm the Chief Operations Officer, as having been duly introduced. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm required to, to, to provide a consolidated presentation uh, on behalf of the city based on a list of issues that were raised. <clears throat> it is critical at this stage to add that we had issues that were originally raised in the petition and we had responded to those. <clears throat> However, there were some gaps when the leadership visited and also when the consultation with the community uh, in Ward 52 and various community structures, uh, there were certain issues that required further clarity. So I'm going to focus on those first um, and reflect progress there. And then the second part of the presentation will focus on uh, the issues that emanated from the ground during the actual visit, which are also linked uh, to the petition, but are not necessarily captured per se there. So I'm going to respond to all those. All those have been consolidated into one report, Madam Chairperson, including the issues that were raised in the community hall uh, by the members of this committee. So we've done a consolidated report to respond to those, uh, to, to reflect progress there too. If we look at the first part, this one was part of the petition. Uh, there was a concern uh, uh, pertaining to the slow progress with regard to Bambai housing project uh, and Amao de Cuba pilot uh, project under greater Amao. And on your left hand side of the table, it reflects how we responded back then to that particular issue of the slow progress. However, uh, uh, time, time, time has, has, has uh, lapsed and there has been some, some uh, progress that has since been registered and that is reflected on the, on the left-hand side. So uh, in terms of the Pambai housing project, uh, Pambai phase one, extension, which is, in, which is Pet Marshall, we are happy to report that uh, planning funding was approved by the department and Spluma application was approved in September, 2020. And this whole uh, uh, part of the project, stage one has been completed. The tender documentation preparation for construction of services is in progress. <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to read uh, verbatim here because the report was circulated in advance, but I'm just going to focus on areas that require specific emphasis. Uh, the point is that the contractor is, is anticipated to hit ground uh, during the course of this month. In terms of Greater Amaoti, which is a catalytic project involving uh, six wards, inclusive of the wards, of the ward in question, that is Ward 52. Um, <clears throat> the project is at the planning stage. Funding is approved. EIA is anticipated to be completed in June. Um, <clears throat> and and Spluma is, is anticipated to be completed by May 2022. I'm sure the team will be able to explain if the questions arise pertaining to the difference in time. Uh, they will be able to, to reflect that particular period of seven months. Then when it comes to Amao de Cuba, which is, which, is, which is also a pilot under greater Amao, there are four different phases. Um, uh, as it is reflected, uh, phases two and three at, at planning stage, that is progress that has since been registered pertaining to phase one, 166 units already built. Uh, the yield for phase four is 383 sites. To date, 42 units have been completed. Contractor is on site and construction is in progress. However, at this stage, it is important to highlight the fact that 
the structures that have been built, informal structures, are also on the way uh, of providing services. In other words, they've been built and some of them will require to be relocated um, so that services are properly installed there. The target date for completion is December 2021. Then there were a range of issues <clears throat> pertaining to roads and stormwater, and there were some of the projects that were presented in terms of the previous report back in October 2021. But we are happy, Madam Chairperson, to, to report <clears throat> that, that that concrete road uh, is really 50% complete, and the final completion is expected by the end of April 2021. Fourth concrete road, which is about 420 meters long, is, is part of the regraveling contract and is basically 95% complete. The blading of the road, that is when you grade. Uh, so we, we, we don't use the word grade because it refers to something else, but you use the, the blade to cut and le level the road. This was last done, particularly for this gravel road at the end of 2020. The next, the next cycle for this is at the beginning of this month. It will be done during the course of this month. We are quite cognizant of the fact that there have been heavy rains in the province and there may have been quite a lot of damage um, of the road. Uh, but we are hoping that with the blading cycle that is commencing now, we should be able to improve uh, the, the condition of those particular roads. Um, there is, as is part of the normal way of working, the inspection um, of our roads on a regular basis and do the maintenance as per schedule. Uh, <clears throat> there is also an anticipation. Uh, uh, there were at a time when the report was, was, was prepared, which is last week, Thursday. There was an anticipation for a report to be tabled within the bid specification committee uh, for uh, regraveling, which is anticipated to start in September 2021. Um, we will then move to, in, in the city, we have a program that we call community infrastructure uh, program, which is also very active in that particular word. The notion, Madam Chairperson, if I were to explain for the members very briefly, is that the city attempts to allocate 3 million rand per ward every financial year. Um, and this is not in defiance of the integrated planning approach. We do that to give councillors an opportunity to address those issues that are, are, are pressing in a particular Word, but the allocation of the total capital uh, budget is done following the principles of the integrated development plan. But these three million rands, it's for smaller and other things like your uh, speed humps, um, like your <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, small and other things that uh, the, the members of the community raise that really cannot wait for a bigger allocation from a bigger capital budget slice. So uh, in so far as it affects what 52, we were waiting for the professional services uh, uh, appointment to ensure that uh, 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 projects there are rolled out. And uh, there is a submission already that has been done to the relevant offices for this purpose. Um, Madam Chairperson, we I want to go straight to reflecting progress also in terms of the V drains in Bambai stormwater, which was also completed immediately after the members left in October, 2020. Uh, the 48 Haysham was also completed in November, 2020. The members uh, who are on the ground can also attest to that. Erosion protection in Inanda Comprehensive uh, School was also completed in October, 2020, immediately after the, the members were there. Uh, Don't be big street opposite Dube Village stormwater upgrade, which involves the extension of stormwater pipe from MR25 discharge. Uh, um, still require funding, but the design and documentation is completed at this stage. We are looking at, at, at um, making 
budget provision for this in the, in the next financial year. On the matter of the satellite healthcare facility, uh, where it was expected that the municipality engages the Teguini district office, um, the response was, was very clear, Madam Chairperson, was that in terms of the range of support and threshold, um, the health facilities that are in the area are within a five kilometer radius. And they've even highlighted that the new uh, state of the art Dr. Prixley Gasseme Hospital um, is approximately a kilometer away from that particular ward, which is, which is, which is really uh, highly accessible. And you have um, a number of clinics, Guapesta uh, Clinic, which is within uh, two kilometers or three kilometers in Amawati Clinic. So uh, these health facilities uh, surrounding the ward really begin to reflect sufficiency of access to health services. Uh, there was a request for a satellite police station and there was a specific response from SAPS and the situation still remains the same. On the matter of the electricity contractor, uh, where we, the municipality was accused of reissuing the tender to the contractor uh, and so on, at, at that time we had given a, a response uh, uh, that as a result of the delays there, but we were of the view that the project was going to start in August 2020. We are happy, Madam Chairperson and the members, to report that that particular project is complete. Uh, there was an issue about the 30 million rents MPCC, the multi-purpose community center. Uh, I think we did give this response when we were in Phoenix uh, Community Hall. Uh, it was clear that the project was planned by the Department of Justice during the, the TRC uh, days. Um, and it was just a concept that they were proposing, but it was never fully implemented. So there is no <clears throat> a, a specific intervention from the municipality's side. Uh, it was a specific project that had been planned by the Department of Justice, which never took off. Madam Chairperson, there was also a specific issue that was raised uh, that uh, some of uh, the ward committee members were earning two salaries and um, uh, which really was raised as a specific concern. Uh, this, this was raised by another member in the meeting there in the evening. And we, we tried to respond, but we hereby provide a formal written response that uh, we can confirm that there are no people who are paid two salaries. Uh, we, we, we've got very strict internal control mechanisms uh, to ensure that uh, we pay those people that strictly attend the meeting and they are paid one salary. If it was a problem, our salary uh, payment mechanism is, is heavily scrutinized even by our internal audit to test the sufficiency of control, but furthermore, Auditor General also audits those, um, uh, we have not identified any double payment uh, uh, in this particular regard. The issue of the labor exploitation by the GNS contractor, uh, at, back at that time it had been confirmed uh, that there was no exploitation that, that the city was aware of. Uh, however, we took to we undertook to verify uh, uh, these claims. And the report we received was that yes, indeed, we did have a contractor called GNS Civils that was responsible for construction of road 121603, which runs through Ward 52 and Ward 57. Uh, in, according to our investigation, uh, we have not received any complaints from the local labor from the councillor, from the community liaison officer regarding payments that were not forthcoming. Uh, it was further confirmed that the payments was made weekly by the contractor and there were pay slips issued in this regard. 
the monthly EPWP reports and payment certificates are also submitted monthly. This can be verified by the ward councillors of both 52 and 57, as well as the community mm -hmm. liaison officer. Then, Madam Chairperson, there was an issue about the partisan distribution of food parcels along political lines. Um, we can confirm at this stage that uh, the Office of the Speaker did request evidence to be submitted. And to this day, there was no evidence that corroborate uh, the claim that, uh, that the distribution of food parcels uh, 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 was made along political lines. So uh, yes, the councillors are required to be involved, particularly for the confirmation of the beneficiaries and stuff like that. But we can, we can clearly confirm here that um, uh, the, there was no basis uh, uh, for us to, to confirm that the matter was, was, was politicized. In relation to allegations that uh, what 52 employment and subcontracting opportunities are political biased, we can also uh, reflect that our procurement processes do not discriminate uh, amongst entrepreneurs and job seekers based on the political affiliation. So in, in, in the absence of evidence, Madam Chairperson, being submitted, uh, it becomes very difficult to verify these things. And we can confirm that when we did our, our, our own uh, elementary investigation, we found no evidence of this level of discrimination. <laughs> The alleged arrogance of uh, Councillor Stembis of Boxazu was also raised as a matter. Um, the Speaker's Office looked into the matter and this ar alleged arrogance uh, is refuted. Uh, 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 specifically uh, because also it is uh, difficult to really prove that that arrogance um, uh, was there. We couldn't, through the office of the speaker, satisfy ourselves that this claim uh, really had any basis. There was also a concern about the appointment of a second housing company to undertake exactly the same job as the previous company and which caused unnecessary delay. And the community was not happy with the response from the municipal officials in this regard. Uh, we can confirm, Madam Chairperson, that Vuvamu was appointed to complete planning of that Marshall project, Bambai phase one extension. Planning of Pet Marshall is completed, which is which which really reflects that there was no double appointment to do one and the same job. Uh, in this regard. This is the point we are uh, emphasizing here. The municipality had no open door policy and there's been no proper communication on Brooks Farm community in relation to Brooks Farm housing project. And they also questioned the skills of the community liaison, Mr. Gazu, which they were saying were extremely deficient. Uh, and as a result, it has resulted to community uh, to people's houses being demolished unnecessarily. Uh, we can reflect that Mr. Gazu was appointed by the municipality following a very um, involved and comprehensive interview process before the construction started. The, the project, the rectification project commenced in 2016 to rectify 465 units. Of those 465 units, Madam Chairperson, 404 are complete. Currently, the construction of three units are in progress. There are substantial houses which require to be demolished to, to make uh, way for the new, new ones. Simply because the, exist, uh, the existing houses and the new ones cannot all fit uh, on these 58 sites as per approved layout. The point we are making there, Madam Chairperson, is that the need for demolition or part demolition is generated by the fact that we need to comply with the approved layout. 
And this, we are saying, has got nothing to do with the lack of skills or the deficiency of skills on the part of Mr. Gas. <clears throat> right. Um, now I'm coming to the issues now that were raised. First, in the meeting in that uh, uh, community hall uh, in Ward 52, uh, um, before we moved to Phoenix. Can I apologize to the members? In terms of the first point, leakages on the road caused by the skips, it meant damages. It's a, it's a typographical error. I tried to correct it, but the team submitted their report in PDF and it didn't allow me to correct, but it should read damages on the road caused by the skips. The team um, have identified the leaking skips and they will be removed and the rehabilitation of the damaged roads through roads department will be done. I must just hasten Madam Chairperson to say we, we, it would have been very uh, convincing if we had said by when, uh, but judging by the progress that we've, we've, we've registered so far, since the last visit by the leadership, I can, I, can, I, can, I can commit the team here that that will be done before end of April 2020. Greater Amaoti, Chuba Plosa and Pet Marshall projects need to start urgently. We have covered this uh, in the first report, in the first portion of the presentation, as we were referring to um, the, what was contained in the in the in the in the petition, uh, the leak on Pet Marshall Road affecting 60 houses as a result of the water to, uh, that is coming uh, underneath the ground. The team has been sent to go and verify. We were meant by the time of going to press, uh, for the lack of a better word, we were meant to have reflected what the report has shown. Uh, and, and we are committing that before end of next week, we will be able to, to now reflect how many are affected and what is that is going to be done uh, to deal with those. House number 16 on Juba Plosa Road, which is um, uh, exposed to a danger of sinkage, that it can sink any time. The investigation has been done and the team Madam Chairperson has confirmed that the family needs to be relocated. Once again, it would have been prudent to provide the leadership with the exact time of when we are relocating the families. The family affected because if, if we delay, it can lead to a calamity. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm confirming that uh, with the rainy season being upon us, uh, we are going to first facilitate the relocation of this family in, in, the, in the next two weeks. Uh, there is a challenge of blocked sewer system on the Mugadi Road. This was attended to by the team um, and, and, and it was cleared. However, um, if there's still any new challenges of the sewer spillage, uh, uh, we may probably um, also go and check. But as far as we are concerned, this was dealt with. Uh, on the issue of uh, uh, 1995 Pambai areas, we still have checks, checks and RTP houses of 1995, update on current and proposed housing projects. Uh, we will give Mr. Pato, who is the head of human settlements an opportunity uh, to provide to provide progress on this one. Um, there was an issue as well about 30 people in Brooks Farm who don't have houses. Uh, and these people have the letters from court because they are sitting in houses that don't belong to them. The first house is number 1646, which belongs to Mfega, and the occupants of the house still wants his house. In other words, the occupants of 1646 are living illegally in Vegas' house and they really want their own 
house. Uh, there was money set aside for transit camp to deacon people, but this did not happen. And the explanation they were given was that the province has refused to build more transit camps. There are houses which were built on unstable parcels of land and these houses are likely to be destroyed. Inspectors are refusing to issue occupation certificates, but these houses don't pass the building code. So this is the, the detail around the whole scenario there. Uh, the response, which probably can be elaborated on uh, by the technical expert, is that we do have a Brooks Farm housing project, and we, are, we can confirm that all the houses are built to the satisfaction of the National Housing uh, National Home Builders Registration Council, and there is already an update on the progress of the Brooks Farm which we have given above. Number 10, the city is refusing to build retaining walls and they need, and they need, uh, the communities uh, really required a, a, a response as to why is this the case. Um, we can confirm that retaining walls are built as and when required or as having been recalled mandated by the National Home Builders Registration Council. Current, so in other words, we, we can't just go and build it when the experts have not confirmed it to us that uh, there is a need there. So currently there is no site that requires retaining walls under the storm disaster program as identified by MHDRC. The issues pertaining to uh, the war room uh, uh, the non-functionality of such, uh, we, we, we will provide updates um, as the time of submitting the report, uh, we still had not the requisite, we, we still not had the requisite response. Um, <clears throat> the Kedlech Legisa project, which became greater Amawoti, and people were concerned that there was no progress there. Uh, the, the presentation that we've given over leaf on greater Amawati housing project does cover this point. The issues of gabions in Nadoto area, which were built to prevent flooding, uh, uh, as there is a road next to this area which allows water to flow into these houses and they needed update on how to resolve the matter. The site meeting with the ward councillor will be arranged next week to investigate, which means this particular week, and the plan of action will uh, and to execute the matter will be done. I'm, I'm really shy as I'm presenting this, Madam Chairperson, because I'm sure this is the response that you were not expecting since you were there in October. Uh, the engagement with the ward councillor should not only be arranged now, so we do acknowledge that we are not on top of our game insofar as that is concerned, because that should have been done back in October and we acknowledge it in advance. Uh, there are sickly people who live in waterlogged houses and we need to move them very quickly. Um, the response there is that the Pet Marshall housing project will prioritize these, these, these critical uh, cases. So in a matter of a couple of months or even weeks for that matter, these cases will be given special priority. There is a separate presentation on finance, just the, the, the last two slides. So I'm going to stream through this fairly quickly. Uh, uh, why was the expenditure of 350 million rands written off? How did we arrive at such a decision? I think we responded on that particular day and uh, uh, specifically where we we. We did reflect that all issues of UIFW are investigated by the City Integrity and Investigations Unit. And then the recommendations from uh, the Municipal Public Accounts Committee. Well, then the recommendations from the CIIU report are then submitted to Municipal Planning Accounts Committee in a report. And then based on the CIIU report, Recommendations. The Municipal Public Accounts Committee then recommends to council to write off the expenditure. So we we try to explain this, but in the interest of time, uh, the point being raised here 
is that the law does allow for writing off of some of irregular expenditure because not all irregular expenditure is born out of uh, an intention to uh, uh, to cause the loss to cancel where clearly negligence cannot be identified as to the cause for a loss uh, and the value was received is such that the procedure was not followed uh, there's no need for uh, for the council to proceed against the officials involved, except in cases of fruitless and wasteful expenditure. We tried to explain that last time. The 2.3 billion rands unaccounted for as part of the RPTN project. There's no 2.3 billion rands which is unaccounted for as part of this project. Uh, monthly and quarterly reports are the National Department of Transport, the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Committee, and the audit committee, and there is nothing like this. 70 million rands, which has been used, but the Auditor General visited the area and found leaking ablution facilities, update on repairs required. Here, uh, we, 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 we have acknowledged that uh, a project of that nature with such high use intensity, you are bound to have the maintenance issues. Um, and the contractors are on site to deal with the maintenance issues as part of their ongoing responsibilities. You will recall now that Konuba is over what now? It's over 10 years old. So in general terms, you will experience issues that pertain to maintenance. And, uh, and that is really being, being um, attended to regularly, which in our view does not necessarily mean that the 70 million rents that has been spent has gone to waste. There was an issue about debt recovery, which uh, the members of the, one member of the, uh, an honorable member of the portfolio committee raised, and they needed to know what is the plan. We will show uh, as, we, as we present uh, the finance uh, staff, uh, the impact of COVID-19. However, um, uh, that impact was exacerbated by the fact that we, we decided, and it was a noble cause that the council decided to suspend credit control activities because it was in the middle of the pandemic and we wanted to, to ensure that everybody has access to water and electricity for steaming and for uh, preparing hot beverages just to fully comply with all COVID-19 protocols. So whether you were uh, a defaulter in your payment for services, the council took a decision that you did not deserve to be left to die. Uh, so it was a noble decision that the council took and this really impacted our credit control activities. Uh, uh, when the COVID-19 impact lessened, uh, we encouraged customers to enter into payment arrangement and so on. Uh, and these are the activities that we take, such as profiling the client, the customers and their, and their property portfolios and so on, attaching rentals on lease properties, taking legal process, designing and implementing right of strategies. It's all part of the debt recovery strategy. So what we are reflecting is that we do have a very uh, comprehensive debt recovery uh, strategy. 48 what committees that are functional. Uh, see, I'm not used to, to the Zoom. Sometimes I get these buttons that just drop and hide the content. Hey. You must get yeah. used to it, uh, COO. Just get used to it. Okay, I'll try, <laughs> Madam. <G. laughs> we use we use the Microsoft uh, Teams, so I'll I'll have to adjust because the leader should use it. Um, but what we 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 are reflecting here really is is that there are many interventions that we put in place to ensure that we enhance the functionality of what committees. This matter was debated at great length. And we, we, we finally conce conceded that <clears throat> there may have been issues about the formula 
used by Cogta, but that formula is used elsewhere and the results are different from ours. And uh, so we decided to, to implement uh, quite a number of interventions, the workshops with councillors, uh, outlining operational challenges and proposed interventions. Uh, the next councillor workshop will be held on Friday the 9th, uh, this coming Friday, really. So, so as to ensure that the 48 non-functional ward committees are really made fully functional. Um, according to Cogta reports, Eteguin has the highest number of sewer, sewer spillages and water losses, yet we have 128 engineers. What are these engineers doing? The, four, the five points we've put here, Madam Chair, is really reflecting that some of the causes of um, elevated levels of water spillage in Eteguin are as a result of a multiplicity of factors and they are concentrated in certain areas where we have really intensified housing provision uh, without the concomitant improvement in park infrastructure. And these also have been exacerbated as well, Madam Chairperson, by the fact that those areas are really surrounded by dense informal settlements uh, where people connect uh, illegally to the system, um, and yeah, and also some uh, people here yeah, abuse the infrastructure by dump, dumping foreign objects such as towel and all those things. Vandalism as well also lead to these uh, problems, uh, lack of resources, location of depots and aging sewer infrastructure. But I think uh, the head, uh, Mr. Mswedi, is also here because uh, I, the question is partly responded to here, but the question is, what is the plan? And in these five points, uh, we've just only described what the problem is. Uh, Mr. Msweli will just zoom in and take us through what the plan is. The issue of the retiring CFO, what is the succession plan? The matter of the CFO is under control. We have uh, the longest CFO in the longest serving CFO in the country. Um, he has 40 years of unbroken service in council. Nearly 20 of those uh, have been at the helm of the, of the finances in our city. He has served us with diligence. Um, and it, it really, we have agreed to say he must borrow us his three months till the end of May 2021 to assist in the recruitment of the CFO because of the new one. We have faith in his capabilities that he will know what will the job fit be. And council really wanted him to, to, to provide his input. The post was advertised and is closed on the 26th of March, 2021. And the arrangement is that he, he, he should be part um, uh, in supporting a council in this process, but also have an opportunity to help induct the newly appointed CFO. The issue of the corrupt, uh, 62 corrupt councillors that have not been brought to the ethics committee, it's high time that I must remove this thing now because uh, it's hiding the entire content. I don't know where should I go now. Uh, my apologies, Madam Chair. Uh, it has really covered the, the entire progress on 23. If you can please re uh, refer to your to your uh, reports, which may which may adequately reflect what is the progress on item number 23. Item number 24 details of the COVID-19 expenditure. There is a specific slide that I'm going to refer to now. Sewer spillage. Um, uh, it's part of the response overleaf, uh, so we've covered that. What action is taken about revenue management systems and what are we going to do with the officials involved? The tone of the questions reflected that there was something wrong with revenue management system. Our, 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 our averment is that if that was so wrong, 
uh, the revenue collection system in the city would have collapsed. Right now, we are competing for spot number one alongside Cape Town in terms of having uh, uh, the best collection rate. Um, and that really shows that the system is functional. It does have its own glitches, uh, uh, but what we have done really, we have allowed an opportunity for people to engage directly with revenue management uh, team where they may feel that uh, the bills they are, they are receiving are quite high and unreasonable. So we have activated that part. The system is not uh, <clears throat> a zero defect. It has its own challenges, but to say that it's so collapsed such that officials need to be dealt with, we are basically saying uh, there's no need for that because the system is functional. There are recommendations which were made in some in some report, and these have been considered by relevant structures of council. Sewer spillage in Umbilo River is problematic. Yes, we do acknowledge that uh, uh, the teams are, are sent. Uh, but what we have decided to do is to is to is to try to hire uh, um, rators, the sludge removal and the purchasing of chemicals, to deal with all the issues around Umbilo uh, treatment works. Um, update on Umbilo Umbilo crematorium furnace. We we registered some quantum leap here, Madam Chairperson, uh, in that it started working, particularly at the height of, uh, during the height of um, uh, second wave. Uh, but it has, it has, it has also uh, uh, collapsed due to uh, gas shortage. And this is very regrettable. Uh, and we have now hastened to prepare a section 36 report and we anticipate that this problem will be resolved by the 30th of June, 2021. Cremation services are being referred to Tongat Crematoria, which is also city owned, and, and, and to the four privately owned uh, crematoria. Capital expenditure is on the decline and the reasons for that need to be clarified. There's a specific slide that talks to that. Um, the UIFW and its contributing factors update is required. An outcome of the CIIU report is currently in progress, as I said earlier on, uh, and the recommendations from the CIIU will then be enforced accordingly. Madam Chairperson, you uh, specifically, if my memory serves me well, you were quite sharp in raising the issue of the slow progress on disciplinary cases. We are happy to report, Madam Chairperson, that uh, for the first time, we have surpassed 65% of cases that we have completed. Uh, in a short space of time, we have ramped up dealing with these issues. Uh, and even Auditor General has acknowledged that. Commissioning of the Western Aqueduct, Mr. Msweli will assist as part of the meeting. Uh, disaster management plans in the city. Uh, uh, yes, we do have a, a offsite plan uh, and there are specific plans for various sites that have been prepared and are awaiting sign on. Update on the money spent on security during lockdown. Uh, these are the details. This is the breakdown. It may not necessarily all be security, but it's 15.2 million last year. It was 65.9 at the at, at, at the commencement of, uh, of, of, of the lockdown. Over time, 111.9 million for both metropolis and security. I request that members recognize that our police and security establishments were required to be uh, on active alert uh, to enforce lockdown regulations. So uh, people worked at, at an elevated gear. And of course, you pay over time when you have a situation like that. I'm raising it up front because the figure does look scary, but it was uh, during the disparate period. Uh, but we do submit reports to COGTA on a monthly basis about protection expenditure for the members that are on protection. 
status report on on Mobeni Primatora. We've spoken about that. Officials uh, that block roads when there's a strike. Investigations were undertaken, and 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 some of them are yet to be concluded. The issue of the 30 million rents spent on entertainment, it is, uh, uh, it was partly on virtual uh, TV that was done by uh, uh, PRC, uh, which is Parks uh, and Recreation. And this matter is really up for disciplinary for the people concerned, inclu including the, the head, and we are waiting for a referral to financial misconduct uh, commit. Has the municipality spent all the allocated budget for disaster? No, not all funds have been spent due to delays and disruption with projects, certainly within human settlements and, and, and trading services. The story about what committees and their dysfunctionality, uh, I have highlighted quite a number of things and in the interventions. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that, Madam Chairperson, if you can allow me to, to move towards concluding now. Um, I've spoken about the disciplinary cases, um, which has surpassed the 65% mark for the first time. And these cut across uh, different levels of management. Uh, I do know this. Uh, specifically because I'm also involved in some of those where they involve quite senior people. <clears throat> Just the two annexures that were related to COVID-19 expenditure, Madam Jefferson, uh, these are the items uh, that we really had to cover under um, under uh, COVID-19, it's employee related costs, the overtime stuff, you will realize that it was specifically high at the beginning of the lockdown, particularly when we hit um, alert uh, level one. And, and, and you can see in, in, in the current uh, financial year that it has specifically decreased. Then you had building contractors, uh, poverty relief, which is your food parcels, uh, granting aid that we had to provide to one of our um, one of our entities, which is Deben Marine Theme Park, Shaga Marine, uh, bailout of that amount, uh, uh, 42.6 and 30 million in the financial year. Higher charges had also rocketed, skyrocketed because we had to to hire water tankers uh, and, and ferry water to distant areas as an attempt to ensure that we increase coverage for our people. Consumables, uh, general expenses, medical requisites, external security. So these are all things that we covered under that particular uh, budget as part of operating. Then under capital, it was really the issue of buying more computer equipment as our people were forced to work from home. Uh, the protective screens, the static water tanks, water dispensers to ensure that people have ongoing ongoing supply. For, 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 for 1920 financial year, it was 452 million rand. For 2021, it's 121. So that answers the question about what was the expenditure. The question was that the expenditure is, is low. Um, <clears throat> the team here uh, provided specific projects, uh, capital projects that were planned for what 52. But really the response to that is that uh, uh, if you look at that particular uh, presentation that I did last time, it wasn't really reflecting a significant decline. Uh, it was in actual fact reflecting uh, that the city has consistently been on course to spend the allocated capital budget. That's why our response there was basically uh, saying there's no decline, honestly speaking. 
bar the minor percentage difference between uh, uh, various financial years, but it, is, it didn't really reflect decline. But however, here we are providing a, a list of capital projects that are planned uh, for this financial year in that particular award. I'm sure the members of the community also would love to lay their hands on information like this. The Haysham Phoenix Stormwater construction of ablution facilities, uh, <clears throat> a lot, uh, 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 in that particular area. Uh, the refurbishment of the new uh, of the halls, uh, which also serve service. What 52? There's a six million rents allocated for that, and four million rents. Uh, uh, the issue of Whetstone Library upgrade, Alagabusha uh, Gardens, uh, which have been started in the air. Madam Chairperson, that is, represents my last slide of the presentation, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, um, COO. And Tatembele, if you can then remove the presentation on the screen. and switch off your video as well. Thank you. Thank you. Felix, that's the presentation. Unless, can we first check? Does Keze and Kota want to say something? I should think it's a lens. Zanel, you want to say something or you'll assist in the answering of questions as raised by members? Wow. Okay, colleagues, can I see a show of hands? Who wants to interact with this presentation then? Colleagues, Kalipi will be the first one. Only Kalipi. That's far. Proceed, Honorable Kalipi. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson Chair. You will remember yesterday I reported to you that I'm in the Eastern Cape, so my video is going to be a uh, switch off in order to have a good signal. What's wrong with the Eastern Cape, if I may ask? Uh, there's a challenge What's wrong with the network. Eastern Cape? I believe there's a challenge of Proceed. network. Do you hear me? Proceed. But Chair, do you hear me? Yeah, I can see. You can switch off the video. I think Parliament is good. OK. Mm. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you yes. very much for, for the presentation. But Chair, I must also say that I think that the presentation by the COO, I think is the very same uh, presentation that we received when we first interacted with the municipalities on the petition. I don't know if the petitioners is going to be getting a chance also. As, as you have reported, Chairperson, that they are here. Because some of the issues that they have raised here uh, is only they most going to confirm in terms of what Ubabu uh, Umusa Mpele was reporting on. So, uh, I just want to check something because when, um, I'm, I'm not sure in terms of, because Musa, when he was talking, was saying that uh, issue number one, issue number two, issue number two, what, 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 what. But I'm just going to shoot straight. My understanding was to get, after we have outlined the process to say that this matter has been also uh, approved uh, by the national parliament. And the speaker also said, no, the, he, she really wants to get a feedback 
on the progress of on, on this petition of Ward 52. So I will have think that we are going to get a progress report in terms of the issues that we raised. For instance, Ubabumpele, when he's reporting on the issue of Brooks Farm housing project, if my memo, my memo receives me right, Chairperson, there were specific issues that were raised pertaining the Brooks Farm housing project, which is a rectification project. Um, that follows the meeting that we had with uh, the Premier of KwaZulu Natal with all his MECs. And the, um, the former MEC, who was uh, MEC Mamopeg Nkunyen, also took upon herself to make a follow up on the issue that was raised on Brooks Farm Project. And um, when we had an oversight, as Chair, you also mentioned during your introduction with what happened, we ended up not meeting uh, the petitioners, but the meeting uh, became something else. And it also uh, ended up not having a way forward in terms of addressing the issues that were raised by those petitioners. So on the issue of Brooks Farm, I remember, Chair, that some of the community members even went to Brooks Farm and also saw some of the houses that it was a, a bone of contention. Babum Bede was just um, passing on that issue that I think we should also get a, a, a way forward because what needs to be done is to get a report from the municipality, also to get a report from the Department of Housing at a provincial level because there were two parallel processes as far as I know. Um, the municipality even called a meeting after we have had our oversight in terms of uh, the issues of Brooks Farm housing projects. I think after two months or a month, the municipality together with councillors called a meeting to address or to give a progress report uh, on this specifically housing project that it was raised here. The issue here, I'm very happy that there is a head of a portfolio committee here. Maybe we are going to able to check a progress because he's here. The issue here that we raise in this portfolio committee is that housing project of Brooksam, Brooks Farm has a number of housing. As a result, now when the municipality took a decision to rectify that project in 2014, if I'm not mistaken was that some of the people have already extended their houses. So therefore, with these new houses that are being built, they are not going to benefit because they don't have spaces. That was the point of contention. And we raised some of the reasons, for instance, to say that this project is old as 1999. And if it's old, some people raise some funds they went and get and got some loans. Others, they even tried to make a way because those houses that were provided in 1999 or whatever year, which I can't remember, were too small for their families. So therefore, if the municipality is saying that, no, let me come back and rectify this project. So it means those people, they are going to be punished on the basis that they don't have enough land. So therefore, we were suggesting, we were saying to municipalities, let us look to other options, of which the former MEC, which is Mamu Pekinkonyene, prepared to listen because she understood very clear what the portfolio committee was raising, to say that let us get some options in order for these people not going to say that, no, now I'm not catered for because I don't have enough land to extend my house. So therefore, when she was in that process, she even um, uh, she even pre she was even prepared to go and do it oversight as the MEC by then. Then she she couldn't go on because of the various reasons uh, 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 that prevented her to end up to go and see the housing project. But she called the meeting in her office with all stakeholders and the municipalities were there, and she started a process to engage with community to engage with the department that she was leading to say that how to resolve this matter. 
So I was hoping that we were going to get that progress report because the community meeting this was called by the municipality officials. I can't remember the date, I was not there, but I remember they were there to give a progress report in that regard. There is something that is happening in order to address these concerns of those people who have extended their houses. I was thinking that Uba Bumbele or the speaker or Uba Busabelo is going to reflect on that. How far with that process? Because the community were being told by the leadership of the municipality uh, in that regard. That is number one. Uh, number two, there were some issues. Uh, unfortunately, the mayor is not here today. And uh, I also think that maybe he's still not feeling well. I remember that he was also not feeling it for some times and I wish him a speedy recovery uh, as our mayor, as our brother. But when the mayor came, was attending this type of a meeting, there were some specific issues, for instance, to say house number 1810, which is an old house. So the process of the municipality when they were saying, please let us check here as the municipality to say that you, do you have an enough yard for us to build an extra house? as per our project. So there were houses that were also told to demolish their structures. A case in point that was also made as a reference before was house number 1810, whereby um, Mrs. Ngobo was told to deliver his structures in the area so surround Ngobo was accommodated. And then after that, the very same municipal officials, they came back and said, no, uh, it seems as if we are not going to able to provide a new structure because uh, and we raise concern of such nature to say that it can be if a person is, I mean, their hopes are high now uh, because if a municipal official is coming to, to my yard or to my house and say that, no, we are going to build you a house. And then after that, the very same officials of municipality to say that we made a mistake and no one is addressing that matter. And I remember specifically that day, the, the, the mayor, uh, 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 after what we have raised in this committee, the mayor and the team went and met Umamungo. But so far, I thought we were going to get a progress report in that regard with what happened to those specifics. The other issue that I want to get a clarity, because it was raised in that meeting, that was a wrong meeting about these 30 people. And now Ubaba um, COO is also reporting in his presentation that there are 30 people who have some court papers saying those people who occupy their houses uh, is the wrong people and they still need their house. And if you remember chain that meeting, when I was under heavy attack, the CEO of the project stood up and said, I'm the one who is responsible for those 30 people. So therefore is reflecting on this report. So if we can get a clarity on that regard, because when he was reporting here, he just said that no, the municipality was prepared to provide those, uh, I don't know how to call those camps, but uh, there were some challenges. So we really need to, as a portfolio committee, as a committee of parliament, we need to get into bottom of that report that is reflecting here about the people who are dead, who have, who does not have houses because their houses are taken by wrong people. My understanding, even in that meeting with the MEC, Oscar, who was representing the municipality that day, when we talk about this issue of vis-a-vis -vis people who does not have enough yard or land, in order for them to benefit with this new uh, rectification. He did mention in that meeting of, of the MEC to say, most of these people, some of the challenges that the Brooks Farm housing project is having is that some of the occupants are not the occupants that are originally on the list. And the MEC by that time wanted to know, how do we resolve that one? Because my understanding as Uhlengi Mkalipi is that most of the people who are occupying the houses in Brooks Farm, whom were not in the original list, have sold their houses. So therefore, if now we are told here, officially that there are people who are stranded and their houses are, are occupied by wrong people. So I think it's a cause for concern. 
as members of this portfolio committee must get into the bottom of it. What happened? Why this issue? Why this house supposed to be in the faith in Dambi, but is occupied by Ushengi Wim Kalipi? So why the law does not take it cause? Because it was a serious allegation when, when it was said in the meeting, I sold those houses. So now, if is the official report now reported here, I think as a committee member, we must also take it up to, 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 to get to the bottom of this uh, problem. Why people are stranded, why municipalities have allocated them houses because we have to deal with so, the, such issues, Chairperson. Uh, the third issue that I also want to make a follow-up on is the issue of a billing system that we raised here before. And maybe I thought that uh, UCOO was going to update us since we raised the issue of a billing system whereby we said vulnerable people of Etequin are getting some wrong bills as a result they have huge bills in their shoulders. The other issue that needs to be clarified here, uh, I didn't hear him very well, Ubabu uh, Musa, CEO, when he was saying that, I don't know if he was saying that um, the head of department of water, Eknik uh, Msueli is going to talk, or he was making a reference, uh, a chairperson, but, I think uh, I, we need to get some clarity in terms of challenges that we are facing at Etequin in terms of water department. Uh, when we were there during our oversight as a committee, uh, it, it, the issue of water uh, challenges came very clear. It was raised critically and also the department was very honest to say that no, we are experiencing some of the challenges in terms of the department. I also remember Chair, you even said no, but it's very disturbing because uh, this municipality have skilled people in terms of uh, uh, to support the Department of Water. So we, we need to be told, how are we going to unlock those challenges? Because uh, what we get from the ground is that in some areas, this issue is becoming very serious. Some people are going uh, without water for several numbers of days. So is any um, a, a program that are in place to address this? Because one of the things that one might think is the reason is that the, the infrastructure is aging. So if the municipality is going to cover that to say, how do they uh, address this aging of infrastructure? The issue of sewer spillages, uh, stormwater and so on and so on. Yes, we do have some problems of that regard. Uh, if I make an example, Chairperson, I don't know, maybe uh, the CEO or the speaker or other um, leadership of the municipality is going also to, to, to clarify these issues. I don't know how do they do their monitoring. In, uh, for instance, Chairperson, one will call to say, uh, for days. And uh, you lock it in, in, into a system and then they will send a uh, plumber to go and attend to that particular uh, problem. But you find that, no, they don't have monitoring system. I have attended to that particular uh, 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 call out. That meter was not fixed. At least but it was not fixed. So I have specific cases, so of which I don't think we must take it to specifics, but is a cause for concern. If all plumber, benigwe umkandlu, umsebenzu to go and fix this particular meter, and then uplamba nimlande la ganja ni, eh babu sabe lugusi this plumber ufige wa fix a little bit, ngoba umparatu zokunute eka tenge report a meter, but still amanzi as a poem. The issue of uh, clinics, I know that uh, it's 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 is not within the jurisdiction of the municipality. But because Ubabu Musa also touched on the issue of clinics, he even make an example of Utikoni Clinic Egapesta, so is next to Ward 52. So I, I really don't know. I, don't, I really don't understand. Maybe he will clarify me because my understanding of the area is that Upesta, a person in within Ward 52, a person from Trenance Park can't be serviced by Clinic Egapesta. As much as I understand, it might with, without uh, um, outside their jurisdiction. 
but I don't think it's correct to say no in terms of AMA clinic about 52. Uh, so even if they suggest that let us have a mobile clinic, uh, that challenge that Umpagat is raising is not going to be attended to because Econi clinic is best that can save his Umpagat. He was a trans man or oh, I really don't get what UCO is trying to say here. The, er the, the issues of flat areas. I know a particular area by the name of Kastau which was reported long time ago, which is a, a 50 year a flood zone. So therefore, OCO, when he was touching on those flood areas, I didn't hear him uh, specifically. And Chairperson, if you remember when we were dealing with municipality, was say, I think was okay. And we raised this concerns of flood, of floods, whereby Umnambiti is Idolopa, Abantu Basebe Kugula, Abanyebe Hanjiswa, with um, Ama, ama, uh, what do you call these things, the say, say my shops. And then we wanted to know what is the plan. And when the official from that municipality um, it was justifying the issue of e flooding in that particular uh, town, when the e exemplary Teguin, what he, uh, this thing must not be seen as challenges only in Umnambit. Even the Teguin municipality, they do have such challenges. Wabalis Pimp. And I also said, no, I can't remember from the top of my head about the challenges of his pain. But now I know today is an area called Gastau, Emma Wood and Award 53, which is next to Award 52, who have a, 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 have a, a 50 year old flood area. So Abantu Bakwelelapa in the particular area. So I didn't hear him very clearly uh, or, or, or to, to say how to address those issues to avoid what we, we have been discussing here with uh, Umnambiti uh, leadership. So the last one, Chairperson, which uh, I think the petitioners, if the chair is going to allow them, because the whole thing that brought the municipality in this committee was the um, petitioners saying that they have tried to talk to municipality in terms of their challenges, in terms of service delivery, but they don't get joy in terms of feedback while now in the presentation is suggesting that no, there is a progress. So the big question is, if the municipality is addressing those issues that were raised by uh, the people of War 52. So the big question now arise is that, is the municipality uh, talking to these people who wrote to parliament? To, because we also suggested for, from the first meeting as this committee to say, as a portfolio committee, let us also suggest some of the ways to address these issues. So the municipality, the good leadership is a leadership that also account to its people. If Kukona Undonagele in such a way that people are saying, hey, we have tried by all means to engage with our own municipalities in terms of service delivery. So now let us go and knock so also here, we are in a position of leadership. We also have to guide them to say, no, sit down with these poor people and also able to talk to them in such a way that you find a common ground. So today we are here to get a feedback because also the speaker in terms of the constitution, she wants to know the progress report. But the most effective way is to talk to people. This is the people that are under uh, F Ward 52, which is serviced by Etekuni municipality. So, Aiko Enye Indlela is Nagwazo Guti, Singo Bengayo, this thing. No Guti Sambe, say parliament, they say good provincial government. So, the only solution that we all have is to sit down and address whatever issues are raised by the community and to establish that relationship between the municipality and uh, the, the community at large. So I wanted to, uh, to, to check with the leadership of the municipality if they have um, said to this community, let us sit down, let us work together. Go about Chairperson, all other uh, measures that the municipality is also trying to reach through communities. What well, a case in point is the point of ward committees. And I remember very well during our oversight, uh, Uba Busipotele was there and he told us as an acting CEO that uh, they are doing all in their powers to ensure that the ward committees are functioning. 
And we raised the concern to say that, you know, Etego municipality is 110 wards, and surely we'll need a fa this ward committees to function. So therefore, we also have to get a report in that regard. If after the meeting that took place, I think it was October 2020, if I'm not mistaken, but after that meeting that we had, is anything talks to ward committees in terms of reviving them? Because those are also the ways, the ways and means of getting problem resolved in terms of service delivery. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi. Can I allow Honorable Hadebe to also say something? Over to you, Honorable Hadebe. Thank you, Honorable uh, Faith Mutambi, and uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see you, Honorable Adebe? <laughs> now, here I am, Chair. That's I've been following the discussion on YouTube and the comments thereafter, Chair. It's amazing what people are saying about us at this time of the night. Um, Chair. Uh, what did they say? <laughs> now, I'll forward you after my question, Chair. And those questions are directed to you and the WIF. <laughs> um, I, I welcome the response um, from questions that were raised by the committee when we visited um, Deben. Kweska banana is good, Chair. Um, some of the responses, Chair, partly covers what we had raised but it does not sufficiently address the, the, the questions that were posed. Uh, one uh, uh, case in point, the 351 million of irregular expenditure and subsequently uh, uh, written off by council as per the MPEG advices. The question that was asked chair when we were there is that how did council arrive at the decision and the expectation from our side was to get a, a detailed breakdown uh, in terms of how did MPEC following the investigation arrive at the decision to write off. Yes, Chair, we understand that uh, some of the irregular expenditure, there might be value for money. Yes, we understand that uh, council might not have suffered any losses, but key and, uh, and paramount to all this, Chair, is that money was spent irregularly in contravention of the supply chain management policy. So contract might have been issued not following a, a, a prescribed a, a, a legislation. So in us getting a response that only says um, council did not suffer any losses and such council approved right off, it does not answer what is required in terms of section 32 of the Municipal Finance Management Act. We expected to get a report that detailed, these were the officials involved. These are the steps taken to prevent such similar situation from occurring in future. Uh, these are the number of uh, uh, contracts where we think uh, 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 there was value for money. Uh, these are the instances where we think money is not recoverable. Therefore, we recommend uh, a write off. We, we, we want to be uh, 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 well informed like you do in terms of arriving at that particular decision because what comes before you from MPEG, a recommendation and detailed explanation on how did they arrive at that particular decision. Ours, it's an oversight. We are interested in ensuring that su such instances do not occur in future and you are well positioned to receive unqualified clean audit. But when we see these figures and the explanation to simply say there was a, a report from council as such we have written off, it does not speak to a municipality that has done something 
to prevent such instances from occurring in future. So I'm appealing if there is such a report which is detailed as per section 32, because immediately when you encounter such, you are, compli you are compelled by law to report to the MEC mayor uh, of local government on these matters, steps taken to prevent such matters from happening. So such report, I assume it's readily available with detailed information. Coming to the issue of what committees, again, I welcome the steps taken, but from where we are, I was expecting that we'll be told from 48 to date, these are the number of what committees that are functioning now. At the time, there were 48. Now we are sitting at 60 or 70. I'm expecting that feedback so that we can be convinced that indeed the measures and steps taken, they are yielding positive results. So I would like to get a sense and an understanding how many currently to date uh, are fully functional as per our previous uh, engagement where we were only told, uh, I think it's 48 and uh, excuse me if I'm quoting the, the, the wrong figures. Lastly, Honorable Fate Mutambi, the issue of 128 engineers uh, yet the number of sewer spillage are high. Uh, when the honorable uh, uh, member responded, he only gave us challenges of why we have such high sewer spillages and the townships affected. What we want is remedial actions to mitigate such. We did not hear that from the report. Uh, we now know what are the challenges, what we are interested in finding out, what then will be the engineering solution to the engineering challenges that are experienced. Given that you have 128 engineers, you can you, you easily have an engineer for each and every word in, in, in Tequin. So it shouldn't be a tedious process or a cumbersome process to come up with solutions in your engineering challenges uh, that have correctly been outlined and highlighted. So can you get a, a sense, Chair, of uh, how far are you in addressing your engineering challenges mm -hmm. in terms of your remedial actions? And if those actions are having time frames to say, we anticipate at this particular point, we would have addressed uh, these issues. And at this stage, we would have uh, solved all these challenges because our people currently are sitting side by side with sewer spillage. And it's not, it's that order chair, it's unbearable. Even if you are not from that particular township, anywhere you go where the sewer spillage, say when you're driving, uh, the first thing that you want to do is to close your windows so that you do not inhale. Imagine people who are staying side by side with such. So uh, it, it speaks to a situation that must be resolved expeditiously. So that can only be done and we can get comfort chair if we are told what are the measures in place to address such. It's not a, 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 an ideal situation and our people must not accept as a norm that they must live next to sewer spillage. It, it, it can be, we don't want a situation where people have accepted as their way of living that there are sewer spillage. The municipality must do everything within its power and its budget and its human resource and those engineers that are qualified to address the situation. And we want uh, uh, to see a plan in attempting to deal with such. Thank you, Honorable Fate Mutambi. I will forward you the comments in the group. Thank you. Hey, this couple person, I don't know. But let's let's then proceed. Uh, the, I, 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 uh, let me see John Musbia. I couldn't recognize you because the gadget you're using is written Galaxy Tab S5E. Normally, 
we get confirmation for attendance of meetings. That's why I've been able to also call some of the colleagues that have been here. But nevertheless, uh, you have indicated that you will be leaving this meeting to attend to some other things. Now that uh, you are here, can we then allow you to say something maybe before you leave? Then the rest day, a taking a team and cocktail will be able to deal with them. Over to you, MEC. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I'm trying to switch on my video. I think it's on. Thank you so much. Greetings to you, Chairperson, and other honorable members who are part of this meeting, the members of the Tegui Municipality Council and the officials who are part of the meeting, the team from COPTA at a provincial level, we can't see you, Mrs. Svia. Oh. Yes, you must keep it like that. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, yeah, Chair, we, we, we must apologize that uh, my gadget, I thought it, uh, it's, 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 it's showing uh, my name, but then my apology, Chairperson. I've been okay. in the meeting since you started. Chairperson, yeah, I'm not going yeah, to say much. Yeah, like, there's no way that we're not going to acknowledge you. We are humbled when political principal attend these kind of meetings all the time. So my apologies. And I think the time you wrote a note, the time the Etiquini slides were on the screen, I was focusing on the slides. I couldn't read the chat message. I hope no. you also understand. We'll never not acknowledge a political principals coming to our meetings. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, sure. Thank you so much. I, I really yes. understand, Chairperson. I really yes. understand. Um, I'm not going to say much, Chair. I think quite a lot has been said. Uh, your remarks and uh, the presentation by Etewini, but also I think uh, the questions and remarks by Honorable Mkhalipi and uh, the speaker after Honorable Mkhalipi. Um, I think as a department, ours, uh, with all the issues that have been raised that uh, regard and relate to housing issues, uh, we are going to be working very closely with the municipality and follow up on some of the matters that have been raised, but also give support to the municipality and try and find quick solutions on the issues that have been raised, but also some outstanding issues where we need to play our role. We take these matters very serious, Chairperson. We also take this committee very seriously. Uh, we have the responsibility to make sure that we resolve these challenges. That's why we're part of this meeting and we take this meeting as a very important meeting in resolving matters that have been raised by our people who are residing in Etewin and all the matters that are relating to human settlements. It's the commitment, Chair, that would want to give you as the Chairperson and the committee itself and the people of Fetewini that are going to work tirelessly in making sure that we deal with the challenges that they are faced with. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, MEC, for that commitment. Can we then allow the CT to respond to the issues as raised by the two honorable members? I've allowed um, Honorable Mukalipi to take much time because this petition came as a consequence of uh, assisting the petitioners. So normally this is what we do. We allow the MPs that are from that uh, uh, constituency area to then uh, be the lead uh, in presenting the issues as raised. So, can we allow a Tequini to respond to the issues as raised by both Honorable Mukalipi and Honorable Hadebe? Then Chief maybe Lesson. based on the on the responses, oh honorable, oh my apologies. Then there were a lot of hands that came in there after. Uh, honorable Hornevald, Honorable Teza. I don't know who's ethnic Mswele. 
not in my guest list, but the hand is up. Can I first be clarified who's ethnic? <coughs> who's ethnic, Msweli? Uh, I thought perhaps the COO would clarify. Yeah. Okay. I talk at Chapasi. Wait, wait for now. I just wanted to understand who you are. You could have said it, not the CEO, because I'm asking you who you are. Okay. Introduce okay. yourself to the chairperson and members. Okay, and thank you. People, actually. If it's your TV, can you <clears throat> and we'll switch off the sound behind you first. Okay. Can you hear me, uh, chairperson? Yes, and I don't know if you up. oh, there's a video. Yes, uh, I'm on a tablet, so I might have a challenge keeping it like this. But oh, you can see me. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, they, that's me. So oh. listen, I'm I'm the head of water and sanitation. You can see you now. Uh, yes. I can now see you. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Thank you. you because of let's the allow of the, the members, net, Let's allow the, the members to okay. test. That then you'll be able to come and Nick. Now I see okay. with you. Okay. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll switch off the video. You will respond. Yes. I'll give you an opportunity to respond. Can we allow the two colleagues who want to also raise issues? Honorable Kurnevald, followed by Honorable Kaiser. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, this is my video. Um, but um, so I'm still living, but I'm going to put it off due to network if you agree to me. Yes, it's okay. Thank yes, you, Chairperson. Chairperson, Honorable Keza was before me, but I'll be quick. I, mean, I only have one question. And Honorable Kalipi has raised it in terms of the water and light accounts. That's so much incorrect from the municipality. The first question I would ask, and we had, we talked a lot about the, of the, the legal framework of municipalities to see, of to, to see that it has to be strengthened. But there is a, a, a legal framework called the Consumers Protection Act. In terms of the Consumer Protection Act, municipalities are not excluded from it, but yet the municipal accounts do not comply. Um, what steps are the municipality taken so that those um, water and light accounts do comply with the Consumer um, Act as well? Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you so much, Honorable Kornevald. Honorable Plaza. No, thank you very much, Chair. I, I came in very late due to the network uh, glitches. Yes, that I, I saw uh, your apology. Yes, thank I you. I saw your much. apology, Honorable Plaza. I'll be very brief, Chair. Um, I just wanted to ask the head of water and sanitation in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the challenges of, of of water and, and, and open drains uh, in that community as to what actions uh, are going to be taken and have been taken, in fact, to address this issue or in terms of rehabilitation of, 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 the, of the infrastructure, but to, to, to maintain, to, to, to the rehabilitation of, 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 of the infrastructure, but to also to also build the infrastructure within within that area and ensure that the, the people are not plunged into into a further uh, deplorable uh, living conditions. Uh, secondly, um, my my colleague uh, Khadebe, um, Honorable Khadebe, took that question out of my mouth of the of the Auditor General as to what actions have we taken to address. The matters raised by the AG in terms of the full compliance with supply chain management policy uh, that I would have I would have wanted to to come out chair and as to as to other questions that 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 came uh, before in terms of those issues that 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 came uh, to the petitions I remember chairperson that we spoke to the issue of the the partisan distribution of of food parcels. And uh, we spoke to roads and 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 so on. And uh, and I have been picked up. Uh, I, I'm sure I was uh, I was late, and I apologize on that. Uh, I've been picked up on the on the road plans um, that will be 
uh, made for for that community as 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 my honorable khatib is is because this looks like a a very urgent situation as it were chair and what what are the urgent uh, steps that will be taken to to build infrastructure there so that we do not uh, uh, accept these things as a god sent uh, for for us uh, who are living in in areas such as inform informal settlements further destroying uh, those areas for 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 many purposes so thank you very much chair Thank you, Honorable Teresa. Now, I think the head for water can start now to respond. I think he had a, uh, you were ready to respond. Yes, no, thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. I think there were quite a number of, of questions raised. But if I may start with that, your video. And the network looks like it's not too good on my side. So I was I was keeping it until I see that you're struggling. Yeah, I was keeping it off just to to, to help the speed. Do you want me okay. to keep it on? Yeah. Keep it on. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, Chairperson, the first question was in fact there was a question, it was numbered question 20. In the in the city's presentation, and that's a question that was dealing with the 128 engineers versus the challenges that we currently have uh, in the city. I think, firstly, it's important to put in context when, when we said we have about 128 engineers. Those engineers were not just for water and sanitation. That was, and I think it was an estimate at the time, but that was the number of engineers in the city. Uh, I don't. Well, for the size of our city, I think 128 maybe is the right number. It's just my own uh, uh, view there because we are a sort of a 25,000 strong uh, city in terms of the, the number of staff. So only if only about 128 of those are engineers, maybe it, it's acceptable. So I think of that number, I don't have the actual number, but if we have 20, it will be a lot. Uh, that that do water and sanitation, so it's it's not all of them. I thought let let's perhaps clarify that first, Chair. But in terms of what the COO was asking me to respond on was, after explaining all all the challenges around um, uh, wastewater and, and sewer issues, he, he asked the question then, what is the plan? Of course, there are many smaller plans. I will just highlight two or two or three, just to not take up too much time. But then the important one would be the sewer pipe replacement program. Uh, unfortunately, that is right at the beginning. We've just started, we are starting with that. Uh, for water, we did that a couple of years ago. It, it, it was a popular project. It was called AC pipe replacement program that we had for water, where, where I think the city spent close to 2 billion rand uh, replacing all the cement pipes, was ACs for the cement pipes that were old at the time. But we have never really had a similar program for, for the sewer infrastructure where we go on a large scale and replace infrastructure that has aged. Yeah, because this way you're getting failures from the infrastructure is just old. It, it, it's going to fail more because it is old, but we are now commencing that program. It's, it's going to be in the next budget. The one that starts now in July, I think we have a small amount for this coming financial year, but it's a program because that's not a, it's just an intervention, something you have to do forever. So we are starting in this in the next uh, budget, the three-year uh, budget that we are working on now. The also one of the key issues that we're contributing to the sewer problems and still contributing up to today uh, was the fact that um, the contracts that we relied on, uh, the mechanical and electrical maintenance contracts, had expired, and I think we did uh, report that uh, when the, the committee visited. Unfortunately, we, 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 we did place quite a lot of reliance on those contracts uh, for us to be able to respond timelessly to, 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 to uh, falls, because we cannot avoid falls. But I think what frustrates communities is how quickly you respond. If, if they report and you're there within hours, I don't think they will mind the infrastructure failing, because I've just explained that the infrastructure is old, it is going to fail. What frustrates them is that maybe we, are not, we don't get there as quickly as they would like us. So there were those two contracts that we had. There was one for water, 
and one for uh, sewer or for wastewater. Uh, Madam Chair, I think though there have been some delays, and that's part of the reason we are we have the challenges we have now, but we've made good progress with those two contracts. The one for 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 sewer and maintenance. I'm talking now about the mechanical and electrical because the sewer infrastructure relies on on sewer pump stations because when you have to pump, sometimes you have to pump uh, the sewage. So if you don't have that capacity to respond to these mechanical and electrical faults, that leads to pump stations overflowing and spillages onto the river causes. So that particular contract is at the very final stage of being awarded. We're at a stage just before appeal stage where we are going to issue unsuccessful letters to those uh, bidders that were not successful, then, then we'll have after that the appeals period. Uh, one doesn't know what's going to happen, whether there'll be any appeals or not. But if they were, if we assume there, are, there will be no appeals, then then I would say safely, perhaps in a month's time or so, so as a worst case, that we should have those contracts in place. That that will bring about significant improvement because when we did have those contracts before, we never had issues. And I think communities can attest to that. But of course, they don't know when that was, but that, that will assist us. Um, lately, we've unfortunately also been affected, uh, uh, Chairperson and honorable members, by, by load shedding. I think load shedding is a national uh, challenge. We, we pump a lot on, when it comes to water provision. We pump a lot when it comes to uh, uh, wastewater, as I've just explained. So when we have this, this load shedding, it does also just make things worse for us. Uh, so there is, again, a, an SEM process underway. For, for the procurement and installation of standby generators. So just to mitigate against the effects of, of load shedding in the, because we assume that that's going to be with us for some time. So that's what we are also busy with at the moment. Uh, there are other initiatives to improve productivity in, internally with our own resources. We are also working quite aggressively on that, but I, I thought the other ones are more tangible because it should be contracts that should be awarded. We have found that most of our pump stations as well, because of, of just growth in, in, in population in the areas that we, we are talking about, uh, you find that you lose the redundancy that you would have had at the time when you installed the infrastructure. What I mean here is you might have a pump station, sewer or water. Normally you would, you would have pumps that pump and then you have standby pumps that are there in the event that one of the pumps uh, that, are, that are working has a problem. But with most of our infrastructure now, you don't have that redundancy anymore. If you have three pumps, all three pumps have to work all the time. And that is purely because of the increase in demand and increase in the, in the, in the population. So we are also working on that now as a program to go back to all our pump stations and increase redundancy. But until that happens, we will just be limping along at a percent. So it's, a, it's an SEM process that we have to follow. And uh, we, again, we're seeing it as a program. Uh, it's not something we will do in a, in a few months, but certainly we, we want to impl implementation must start in the new financial aid that starts in July. So those were the sort of the big interventions on, on what we're doing to deal with sewer issues. Uh, there was a question 31 where the CEO, oh, sorry, I think we submitted information late to the COO's office. And uh, that was a question around the commissioning of the Western Aqueduct. Uh, Chairperson and, and, and honorable members, I must say that this project is, has not been an easy one. It has taken us, we started it in 2008 and we're in 2021 now. That's, that's the magnitude of the work that, that needed to be done. So commissioning has not been easy because the, the, the challenge we're having in the city, and I think we alluded to this when you visited as well, is that we are more than 60% rural in, in just the nature of our city. And the third of our population, I think, lives in informal settlements. So this migration is, is, a, is a really a serious phenomenon in our area. It's an area, if you, if you had time and next time you come, we would like to take you to, it's called Nyokeni in, in Azelmere, where in 12 months, what was once it, almost an informal settlement, and we had sufficient infrastructure to, to supply water in that area, based on that being an informal settlement. Now the houses there are 
if you know Deben and you know Mshanga, the houses that you see in Mshanga are now in that area. It's no longer shacks, it's no longer informal settlements. We have had protests from those communities because now they're demanding water, where is the water? But that, that settlement happened in 12 months. People just went there, saw land, they built these mansions, and then the infrastructure doesn't cope. Now, this is exactly what is affecting the, the commissioning of the Western Aqueduct. We are, yes, we've commissioned some areas. There are areas that were not getting water that are now linked to the Western Aqueduct, and they are getting water. Uh, one, of, one such area that comes to my mind is Chelim Yama. We were even reported to the Human Rights Commission by the, the community of, of Chelim Yama. There were protests at some stage. And, and, and how we resolved that was linking them to this pipeline called the Western Aqueduct. But as I again alluded to last time, that led us in the last financial year to expenditure of in excess of 600 million that was unforeseen. And that was coming out of, out of us commissioning all these areas, which I were unfortunately not paying, but, but increased demand significantly, really significantly. So we are, we, are, we are dealing with that, we're commissioning, but we, we, we are concerned about that, this unintended consequence. Of, of, of the commissioning. We want to make water available, but it's, it's, it's threatening the sustainability of the water business at the moment. But it, the commissioning is happening. There are areas that are now uh, connected and they are now getting water. The areas that we're talking about, the Northern areas where Ward 52 is, uh, not, not all the areas are resolved at this stage. We are still dealing with, with some of the challenges. We are working with Umgeni Water. They also need to do something on their side there's, I know there's a control valve that they need to install, which will then regulate how much water we can take from the Western Aqueduct. So the pipeline is there, but it's trying to balance the water that is available so that it reaches everybody. We, we, are, uh, we are a committee having some teething problems with that, but uh, we had hoped to, co to finish the commissioning in December 2019, and, and we've been working flat out. It hasn't been easy, so we are not yet finished, but, but it's work in progress. As part of that, one of the things we've, we've identified is that we need to build a booster pump station, which wasn't done uh, at the time of, 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 his, of a rollout of this project. We, are not, we have now budgeted for that, but that's one of the ways you bring stability to the, to the Western Aqueduct so that it works, whether you have sufficient pressure, we call it head, whether you have sufficient head or not, because at the moment we're relying on gravity. We are going to now build this booster pump station. It's going to be in the next budget so that the system can work better. So there's a few other things like that, Jefferson, that we have to do. In a nutshell, I'm saying the commissioning is still in progress. Honorable Mkalipi raised uh, some issues uh, around water leaks and, and spillages. The challenge that we had, I would say in the past probably three financial years, was that of running out of budgets. We, we did have those challenges where we were constantly running out of budgets in the last quarter of the year. Uh, we've worked tirelessly on that. We've had to analyze the reasons for running out of budgets. And we did see some, some inefficiencies that needed to be improved. And we've, we've implemented the serious controls at Jefferson. And the benefits have been visible because we, we've seen savings in expenditure on, on maintenance. But the backlog, the, as I said earlier, the, the infrastructure is old. It is failing. Uh, I, I, I went to, as part of our benchmarking, I visited Japan once, I mean, the first world country. The, the number of falls that we do in a day, Japan does in a year. I think that we do something close to 400 or so. I, I might not have the number, the accurate number. That's what they see in a year. So that tells you how many times in a day our pipes burst, our infrastructure burst. It will be about 400 times in 400 different places. So, and that's just because of the age of the infrastructure. We did have some, some uh, constraints in terms of the budget, but the city has other priorities as well. I can just say that we, we yes, we are allocating some, some, some money to this, but more is required if we have to deal with it in a shorter space of time. But we will do what we can with the, with the budgets that are allocated for now. So, because you have to deal with that, you have to replace the infrastructure if it keeps failing. At the moment, we keep sending plumbers to just fix and fix, but uh, there, there is support. The support of the leadership and the, and the city manager is, is, is encouraging because we're seeing some resources coming this way. 
The sewer spillages in the report, I think it was covered some of the reasons why we have blockages. Most of the time, the states that I monitor daily, most of the failures is blockages. It's very few, if any way, you have to go and repair something or replace something in terms of these sewer spillages that we see. 95% of the time, or 90%, maybe for more conservative, it's blockages. And the report that was presented covered that. It's foreign objects being put in there. We've, sometimes we find bricks being put in, in our infrastructure. Uh, I could name a- areas. So we've got to intensify, I think, the education. We, have to, we are starting with that. Well, it's been happening. I think we just need to pick up pace so that we don't get this abuse of infrastructure that's happening now. The budgets, I've alluded to that. We did have here as well budgets issues, but you, that's been, it's also being dealt with at the moment. Uh, the system of monitoring plumbers is, is, a, is a tricky one, and it's one that we've been aware of for some time, because there's often a question asked, as, as Honorable Mkalipi asked, how do you supervise those plumbers? At any one time, for, 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 for the most serious part of our infrastructure, I'm excluding meters, you will have people working per day about 110, 108 to 110 plumbers. So it's tricky then how, do you, how you supervise those. Was for, was the level above that is the level of a superintendent. It's not possible, of course, to have a superintendent to every plumber. Uh, so then there's just protocols in terms of at what stage in these escalations to the next level. But it's something that's been picked up even by internal audit. It, it, it's a weakness, but quite a difficult one to resolve. Uh, and I think we just need to continue applying our minds to that. The, as, as on the technology side, just to try and use technology, uh, I know that uh, we are looking at the workforce management system. It's, you know, there's our strategy office that's working on that. I think that will assist as well to go a long way so that we don't rely on supervision of, of human beings. So, so if I would summarize what we are doing on, to deal with the sewer spillages, we, we're, putting, we're finalizing the maintenance contract, the mechanical and electrical co- contract, uh, for, for, for for load shedding and on the water side, we've engaged our electric, electricity unit and Umgen Water, we're working together. Uh, Umgen Water identified two of their critical waterworks that supply the city. There's two big ones that supply the city. That's the Weekends Waterworks and the David Heights Waterworks. Uh, up until recently, when there was load shedding, both of those major waterworks would be down and that would affect the whole city. And, and because of what I've told, I've mentioned it earlier that we don't have redundancy and supply, demand exceeds supply, what then becomes a challenge after that is the recovery time. Yeah. So for electricity, they'll switch off for two hours on, off, and two hours later on. For me to recover in terms of water supply, that can be seven days in some of these areas. And that's where then you get this huge outcry. People don't understand why it's taking so long. So. After engagement with our internally with our electricity unit, at least there is now agreement that up to a level two, uh, the big one of the two waterworks, which is the Devon Heights waterworks, will will be it is possible to exempt that from load shedding. That has been quite a significant uh, improvement. So that's what is being implemented now. So we would only then have a problem if if ESCOM declared a, a stage higher than level two. When you start, get to level three then you also have to load shed deep in heights. And that's the bigger one of the two works. The other smaller one, which is also big, but big, smaller than deep in heights is the weekends, the water works. It will, up until now, it will still be affected by load shedding. But we are also, again, looking at other ways to mitigate load shedding. So load shedding is, is really is affecting us. But we are not saying it's only load shedding. Uh, there are other issues as well. Shortage of materials has been another serious challenge for us. And this was because uh, some of our important uh, contracts, supply contracts for materials had, uh, had uh, expired. Uh, so I, I know this, again, our SEM unit is working tirelessly at the moment to put in place some stopgap measures. They're doing a, a number of section 36s just to make sure that we have the material that we require to do repairs. And, and those are most of them at advanced stages of being awarded. So, and some, in fact, some have awarded and some deliveries have already started. 
So once that gets resolved, all of that goes into how long you take to respond, which is what the community feels. Uh, so we, we I think we are getting the chairperson, the three-year contracts, while, while they're doing the stopgap measure, they are also working on the three-year contracts to make sure that uh, we never have a problem again. I, I think those are the sort of the key issues. Honorable Hatebe was asking the same thing about the 128 engineers. I think I've answered that. And what is the remedial action? I think it's to be the same things I've just spoken about in the time frames. Various contracts. We are, we work on a contract for the maintenance of the ablutions, which we get a lot of complaints on that. That is, these are the blue containers that we have. That is uh, going through the SCM process. We have work on a contract for for just maintenance, wastewater maintenance, going through the process. What I might, okay, the last thing that perhaps I should touch on is the billing issues. My colleague, I don't know if he's here from electricity, but the question from Honorable Kunerwald was about these billing issues, uh, what is being done. What we see as a silver bullet, obviously, would be the would be smart metering. If you have smart metering, that would be the end uh, of your problems, because I, I am of the view that the billing system itself is now stable. There was a time when we had issues with the billing system, but I think it's fairly stable now. So we don't have challenges with that. Now, what, what needs to be fixed is what goes into the billing system. Uh, on the water side, we, we are working on a, we call it a, a meter reading platform. So the current way we read meters is we, we send a meter reader, he goes there and he reads. And, and basically you just have to trust him that that reading that he's bringing you back is the correct reading. Yeah, that is uh, in the field. But we are, we are wanting to change that and get something that wouldn't just rely on that where you can have some other way of verifying the reading. So hence we are working on a, on a, on a we will be going to BitSpec committee within the next two weeks for, for a platform that would allow us to even get a picture at this stage. This is a stopgap before a smart meter. At least with this, what we're gonna do now, this new platform will be able to get a picture of the reading so that we know what the reading was. And uh, we think that will improve the situation significantly. That will also allow us to confirm the non-revenue water figure because we, we, we declared a figure of about 51%, 50%. But the non-revenue water, you, you need two figures to calculate non-revenue water. You need your, your sales, which is what we're selling to our customers. And then you need what you are buying from getting water. We have 100% percent or close to that confidence in what we are buying from Mungen water, but we don't have the same level of confidence on what we are selling. Hence the measures then to, to focus on, 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 on ensuring accuracy on our side. So that new platform, which should be in place within the next three or four months, will assist us with that. And then we can get correct readings uh, or trusted readings onto our billing system. At the same time, we are, we are also working on the prepaid metering. We are that the project will be going soon within the next maybe two weeks or three to our beats back committee yeah, for an expression of interest. So we are also uh, going to be going the prepaid metering, stroke smart metering route. All of those are, are, are initiatives to improve the accuracy of meter reading. Okay, the Honorable Preza, he says that oh, oh, there are challenges of water in the areas. I think he was referring to Ward 52. When, I, when we visited that day, what I observed was that there was water, unless uh, I could be proven otherwise. My understanding is that there is water in the area. Uh, what was the challenge was the leaks. And, uh, and, and I think I've already spoken much about just what we need to improve is our turnaround times for leaks. But this is, there are other areas where you find that you have challenges with supply. But my understanding of what 52 is there is water. It's, it's all about leaks. So we, we did send our staff after uh, your visit, uh, on the room, uh, uh, Chairperson, and uh, we have sent them back just to again to go and check. Uh, on the water leak side, the feedback I've received from my team is that we fixed all the leaks that were visible, uh, sort of the more obvious leaks. What, what was remaining to be fixed and completed is the leaks where you then, where you need to trace. Some of them are not clear where the leak is coming from and you need to use, use technology and deploy staff to trace. That's what our staff are on the ground still dealing with is those leaks where you can see the water but you don't know where it's coming from. 
but all the visible ones have, have been uh, repaired. Uh, but the plans to rehabilitate infrastructure. We have uh, items in our budget. One would be called relays and extensions. This way, if a pipe keeps bursting, we relay it, we put a new one. There's an allocation for that. It's not enough to solve all our problems in the city, because I think it's about 40 million that we have in the budget. Obviously, that's nowhere close to what we should have. Uh, but that, that's what we are doing. We also have a pipe replacement uh, allocation in the budget. Also, it's, it's something to keep us going, but nowhere near what, what should be there. But at least we, we will be working. Uh, and those, um, the pipe replacement uh, pro program, that project, the SEM is complete. So we're ready, we're ready to hit the ground. But those are citywide, citywide programs. Jefferson, I hope I've covered uh, most of the questions that were raised. Uh, uh, let me stop there for now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Eh? Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, I'll recognize uh, Dr. Krish Kumar. That's the end that's also up. Over to you, Dr. Kumar. Thank you, Chairperson, and um, good evening. Uh, see you. You are uh, sure. by your last man, so we need to see most of you before you go on pension. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, honorable Chairperson, honorable members, all protocols observed. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the first question was by Honorable Kronwald. If that, that, that can either go a bit up or down, we can't see your mouth, only the glasses that you are seeing. Okay, let me see. Any so, better now? That's, but that's much better. Up okay. again? There, any better? Yes, that's okay. better. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Chairperson, I think, uh, let me just take it from the top. Uh, of, of the actual questions that were raised. Uh, and uh, I think Honorable Kronfeld raised the issue of the Consumer Protection Act and our tariff increases. I think firstly, let me just indicate that we follow due process with regard to our tariff increases. There's a proper public consultation process. There's also extensive discussions with National Treasury uh, as the oversight body in respect of the metros. And we do follow the principles of affordability. We try to link it as close as possible to inflation, cost reflective tariffs, and we look at the developmental state that we are in. I think the main driver of our basket of services has been electricity and water tariff increases. And I think we really at the mercy of NERSA and ESCOM when it comes to electricity. Uh, this year, we've had the increase of um, some 15.6% which is going to be a 17.9% increase for metros. And the guideline increase for us will be of the order of about 13%. Uh, and, and I think we will stick strictly to the NERSA guideline. Uh, we have supported as a municipality and as SALGA, we have support and I'm sure we have copped us blessings uh, to also have a similar regularity body for water and sanitation. And we would welcome the fast tracking of this because we really believe that NERSA plays an excellent regularity role. Notwithstanding that, we believe that again, with regard to water tariffs, uh, we are at the mercy of Amgeni Water Board and water primarily due to the fact that it's a basic necessity. Uh, we really need to ensure that there is a cost reflective approach and, and that we really look at affordability as well. So we have been looking at these issues very carefully. We've had no major challenges uh, in terms of Consumer Protection Act, uh, in terms of the municipality having been um, required to account for the increases due primarily to the extensive consultation process that takes place with all stakeholders, um, uh, including business and residents uh, across the spectrum and in terms of the IGR processes that are required. Uh, with regard to uh, Honorable Rajebe, in terms of condemnation of expenditure, we follow uh, Honorable uh, Member uh, Section 32 through the tenant. Uh, and, and if we'd uh, known that we were required to provide the details, uh, we would have actually uh, gladly provided that. Impact do interrogate uh, the actual, every item of expenditure that's deemed to be irregular. There is a proper report that's put to Impact, and Impact then deals with the application in terms of uh, whether value for money has been received, goods and services delivered, 
uh, and and they deal with it strictly in terms of that in terms of the condemnation recommendation that they do make to council. If there's recoverability required, that is also addressed in terms of the report, uh, and and that is dealt with appropriately. Uh, we then deal with consequence management in terms of either neglect by individuals or either fraud or corruption, and those issues there is oversight by the financial control board. I must indicate, honourable chair that uh, through the Office of Mayor, we have put in place the necessary uh, interventions in terms of a clean administration. And with that, the actual clean audit, uh, the current audit that we've just completed, the 1920, has seen an over 50% reduction in irregular expenditure. And, and whilst it's an over 50% reduction, the mayor did remind us that there's a zero tolerance approach to this. And we are working very keenly to try and reduce irregular expenditure to zero. We've also engaged extensively with our provincial copter, as well as national treasury, in terms of reviewing the entire process of irregular expenditure. And we're due to present that to the political leadership and both copter and provincial and, and national treasury will be present at that particular briefing, uh, just to clarify roles and responsibilities and to actually streamline the processing of irregular expenditure. But like we've said to the team and the mayor has directed the charge on this, uh, we shouldn't be in the process of having to worry about that if we took care of the issues in terms of the root cause and we eliminate irregular expenditure. So that's the first uh, charge. So we've made considerable progress and we'll continue in the 2021 year. We've seen as well a drastic reduction and we are clearly on the path uh, for a clean audit. Uh, and we're very confident of that based on uh, the fact that we have put in a number of interventions. We are reporting to the Honorable Mayor uh, fortnightly in respect of these issues. And that will just follow on to Honorable uh, Caesar's uh, issues of the AG uh, and uh, the issue of- What happened to your gadget, uh, Dr. Kuma? We're not uh, only not hearing sure. the echo, did you swap gadgets? No, I didn't. I, I was prepping to get through on my laptop. Yeah. I'm using a cell phone, and, and that's what I'm using. I haven't used any other device. Yeah. That's better now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The person. Yes. Yes. I was just checking who's Honorable Caesar. Sorry, I've okay. got if I've got the name wrong, I do apologize, Chair. Honorable. My profuse apologies. I do humbly apologize. Please forgive me. I will repay you in any way, and I didn't mean any disrespect. So, and I do humbly apologize. Uh, I think then just following on on the AG issues, we are monitoring those issues very, very keenly. As I've indicated, the mayor has uh, over the last three months set up the task team that's chaired by the mayor. We meet fortnightly. We're dealing with all of the AG's findings uh, and the issue is clean administration and a clean audit outcome that we are focused on. Uh, and I think that those issues are clearly uh, reflected in what we see in the current uh, audit outcome for integrity, where there are no material misstatements, there were no uh, major adjustments to the financial statements and irregular expenditure is substantially reduced. And we hope that in the 2021 audit, not hope, currently as we read some financial statements, as of March, uh, we are seeing a major reduction of irregular expenditure and audit findings. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the mayor has requested the five top areas that will probably uh, be standing in our way of a clean audit be closely monitored and we are giving him that feedback on a fortnightly basis. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I think those are the three key issues that you want the clarity from uh, the Treasury on. If there's any issues that I have omitted, please direct me and I would appropriately uh, respond to them to the best of my ability. I thank you and I really appreciate the submissions. Thank you. you if you can switch off your... Yeah, video. I think from the municipality side, there's no any other hands. Can I get the reaction from the petitioners? Uh, can you raise your hand so that I'm able to recognize you?
Lawrence, are you one of the petitioners? Good evening, uh, Chairperson. Can we see you as well? Uh, I'm trying to, okay. I hope you can see me now, Madam Chair. Go up, go up a bit. That's better. So, thank you, Madam Chair. Fine. Okay. Jefferson, I'm, I'm, I'm Lawrence Pato, HOD for, for, for Human Settlements. Oh. I just, they were a good, good afternoon to you. And tell the them you're still in the meeting. Can you tell them you're still in the meeting, Lawrence? Sorry, Madam Chair. Mm. I'm, I'm still in the meeting, Madam Chair. Okay, go down a bit. Okay. There we go. Hold it okay. there. Sure. Okay. Mm. okay. Thanks, Madam Chair. Good evening to you and the Honorable Committee members, Madam Speaker, our Portfolio Chair. Uh, there were a few questions uh, by Honorable Mkhalipi Chair that I would like to address. I think he, specifically they, were, they are to do with Brooks Farm housing project. Uh, he made mention, of course, this is a project that yielded 465 in, to, in terms of it. And at the time when we reported last year, we had 405 that houses that were completed in terms of, of, of being rectified. Uh, five of those were, were, were still to be, to be built, which have been built and completed, which left the 50 that uh, had substantial structures and at, at a detailed explanation that Honorable Kalipi did go through, Chair. Now, those houses, and of course, it's, she was quite correct in terms of saying there were, there, were, there, there were discussion in terms of when we met with yourselves and when we visited the site, and there were further engagement, including MEC uh, of, 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 of human settlement. And, and, and it's quite pleasing. We also had MEC uh, current for, for, for human settlements. And we did a joint inspection in terms of those houses. Uh, merely those are houses that the owners have built and now could not accommodate a 40 square meter, which is our standard size of house when you are, you are demolishing and rebuilding a new, a new house. But out of all those engagement, Madam Chair, what had happened was, and, and, and MSC, Konye, MSC at that time, and, 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 and there was an agreement between us and province that let us do a submission to, to province which is merely asking for material supply against those beneficiaries as per the proposal that was given. That submission was done towards the end of last year. We are awaiting for, for the outcome of that. Of course, once it's approved, it will merely mean distribution of, of whether material vouchers to those families, 50 families of those houses that were, were affected by such as, as, as another oh, 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 member was detailing them. There were house numbers 1640, 1738, uh, and you will, you will recall from the petition last time that there were those numbers 1621, 1676, but that submission may have been done. That's number one. Then, then Honorable Chair, of course, uh, you would have seen and picked up in the response by UKU, where we're talking about NHPRC being the, the regulatory body in terms of, of houses that have been built. So what, what, what has happened, of course, in some of the areas, there have been some recommendations to some of the houses to say you are either going to put retaining walls to sustain those houses so that they do not fall or slip through because now you're building a bigger house which is a 40 square meter house compared to a smaller house that was there before currently we we, we the people are working on site doing exactly that work as per guide, guidance of nhprc uh, trying to, to 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 fit those houses uh, so that uh, they, they can sustain the houses that are, are being built and, and, and Madam uh, uh, Chair, all houses have been rebuilt in terms of the numbers, uh, in terms of rectification. What we're waiting for is just the material supply. Once we've got that out, and then it can be issued. I think lastly, Honorable Member talks about Sitao, uh, uh, Chairperson, people. These are the, quite a number of people that are seated in that flat plane, if I may call it such. And, 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 and it's one of the difficulties which we face as the city. Uh, I know you, you might be aware 
if we have not told you that we've got over 400 informal settlements within the city. And some of the people, obviously, they settle by themselves in such prone areas, which are uh, flat plain. Now, 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 of course, what we as the city trying to do there is to find alternative pieces of land in each and everywhere. We try to find land, to buy land so that we can, because those people qualify for a complete relocation. You relocate them completely to an area where you've got a new project that is built. Now you will understand this goes, this is an area in Amawati where you've got the Great Amawati project, where you have seen details of it talking to most of, 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 of the project is, is, is undergoing planning. So Chairperson, of course, those people are falling under that category. I cannot at this at stage. So we've categorized those informal settlements that need relocation that is falling under that category chain. And you'll find that with the projects that are greenfield projects that do get developed and make example of Konobia, we do relocate and take some numbers of those people that are subjected to those. Some are under power line, some are under flat uh, plane, uh, like the Isita one. And that's where you'll relocate those people that are subjected to, to, to such conditions. Uh, I think the last one, if I am I'm, I'm correct, she picked up on a, she talked about an, an issue, who, who honorable member of people that are seated in the houses, in, in, the, in the wrong houses. She, this is a ratification project and it has happened, she's correct, the, the honorable member in saying it started, the project was built years ago. Now what tend to happen is the owners of the houses that were allocated in the houses are all approved in, 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 in the database of human settlement the subsidy database called HSS. Now, come the time of, 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 of rectifying or rectification of those houses, what we should be, we should be rectifying those houses for the same beneficiaries that have benefited in those. But in many instances, we find that the original owner is no more there in that house of his allocated originally. And whatever arrangement they've made with the, with, the, with the tenant, I'll call it a tenant, or sometimes because they're renting, or in some other times you find uh, they've sold the house to each other, whether formal or informally. Now, when we do come as a department now coming to rectify the house, you will find in many cases the original owner do come, and the people that are in occupation of those houses start to be stranded because it's either the owner will come and say, I'm taking my house back, then you've got to find your own way. And, and, and it becomes now an issue, an allocation matter. Accordingly, we could not say the owner of the house is wrong to, to, to have his own house for that house. He qualified for it and that's his house and he is supposed to be there. Some of the people have, have, have opted to on, on a route of taking or challenging each other legally because there might have been some contractual arrangement that have been made, whether they sold a house to each other and they've signed affidavit or, or something like that and they will opt to take each other. It's quite a challenge. It's an allocation matter, which of course it, 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 it needs all. We have engaged the province on this as well to say how best can we can we resolve it? But I'm flagging it, Chair. It's, it's a challenge that is there where now there's an issue and a fight over against the, 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 the beneficiaries or who should be the rightful owner. And of course, you would ordinarily go to draw your HSS and find the rightful owner there. And you find his, there's a dispute between that owner and the and and and, and the tenant or, or or the new seller or, or the person that the house has been sold to. So those are the are the are the are the matters. I think all in all, chair, those are the issues that were raised by Honor Kalipi. And and if I can stop there, if I've missed anything, chair, you will of course and the other members will raise it for me to 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 follow it up. Thank you, chair. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Patu, uh, uh, chairperson, who's calling the chairperson now? Madam Chairperson, I profusely apologize. I was looking for a facility yeah. to raise my hand. It's the COO, but I can't oh, oh, find. Oh, you are used to, to, to MS word, MS Teams. I see. Yeah. Proceed, I wanted... COO. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I, I, Can I we have... see you now? There's no more presentation. We have to see you now. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's still the question of the settings, Madam Chair. Can you see me now or you're still sitting the light? Or only see the sitting... light. Where are you? Hey, I think it's probably the question of, of settings. I will I will 
I will try to sort it in the meantime. Um, Madam Chairperson, I wanted to, to, before you move on to the members of the community, I wanted to request the, the acting head of engineering, Mr. Tandazul, uh, to respond. There were a couple of questions that related to road infrastructure. Uh, he was also trying to look for an opportunity to raise his hand. He's also used to MS team he was battling. But the whole CEO, Halonga, I'm a counselor, no speaker, who could see them. The COO doesn't know how to operate this gadget. You must go and learn from the politicians. Eh? Okay. I will try it. Mr. Tandazulu, I hope you are not like your CEO. Ne? COO, let's see you. Hey, Mr. Kondazulu, there you go. You're unlike your COO, ne? You must teach your COO how it's done, ne? So proceed. Uh, Chair, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope I'm audible enough. Yes, you um, are. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Chair, I wanted to touch base on, on certain issues related to... Uh, um, roads, roads, and stormwater. Um, I think they, they, they I, I think they, there is a councillor or an honourable member who raised issues on the programs of of roads and stormwater, uh, and he did indicate that he might have arrived late. I think we, we, we oh, when he was presenting, he did touch base on those on those matters, uh, but I, I will then want to to add on those uh, to say there, there there are some roads that we have completed in the area uh, we spoke about some concrete roads that we have co completed through our our price quotations which are at uh, the first one is at 50 percent uh, completion still still in progress and then there is about 420 meters of of a road that is also being regraveled, or let me say, gravel roads maintenance, and also um, there are some contractors who are doing the the the, the maintenance of stormwater systems. Uh, maybe I must highlight, uh, Chair, that the city has 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 um, developed a system. We call it uh, it's a flood management. Uh, it's a forecast management system, where it's actually an early warning system, which talks to the issues of, of, of flooding. When, when there are floods, we are then able to, to foresee that and then be able to, to respond in terms of our stormwater maintenance uh, 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 resources. I think what, what we have done is that we have put together contracts which will then uh, respond to those uh, 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 early warning systems. Um, so, so I think, that's what we are using to respond uh, at this point in time, because we, we could see that the issue of flooding was becoming a serious issue uh, in, in the city. Then we said, let's develop a system like that, which will serve as an early warning system. And then so that we can then prepare our teams or our resources accordingly to be able to respond to those things. We have identified about 200 hotspots as part of that, which we then we are then able to to respond in, through our resources. Uh, but on on roads, I think we have different programs that we are having. Uh, the first one is it's, it's, it's just maintenance of gravel roads, uh, where we go and uh, regravel the area or blade the the the, the road, um, and also we have the roads rehabilitation program where we maintain. We, we do major rehabilitation work on the, on the paved network. Um, uh, and then we have gravel to surface program where we, we upgrade a, a, a gravel road and, and upgrade it to, to be a, a tar road. And what we, we will be doing one of these days, in fact, we are arranging that through the, the councillors throughout the, the, the regions of Etewin is that for the next three years, we will be going around 
the city of Etewini uh, 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 getting inputs from councillors in terms of our gravel to surface roads prioritization program. We have already done our technical assessments in terms of that, or let me say, technical uh, prioritization. But we, we are always saying that must be influenced by AMA councillor because they, they know better in terms of the priority, priorities of, 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 of the wards. We might know from a technical side, but in terms of the wards, even considering the, short, the, the, the financial constraints that we've got, so we are saying it is therefore imperative that we, we go to the councillors and ensure that we, we prioritize together. And, and Ward 52 is part of that as well. Uh, but that is now a plan for the next three years. But also I must indicate, Chair, that there are some pedestrian bridges that we, we will start just now in the same ward. Uh, it's about three of them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they are at the bid spec level right now. And I know that one of them, we're just waiting for the letter of award to, 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 to start there. Um, so also we are trying to address the issue of, 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 of uh, crossings on the, on the rivers and all that, so that we can be able to, to prevent uh, flooding and all that. So we will be doing those things. Also, there are some uh, sidewalks that uh, uh, we have already appointed contractors as well. Uh, there is a program we use, it's called, it's under EPWP program, it's called Vukupile Contractor Development Program. So on the, on the small works like sidewalks and all that, we, we, we usually use them. And that's what we will be doing for We've got three projects um, which we will be doing in the same ward through this Vogupile program. The contractor has been has been appointed, so they will be starting very soon. And also, there, there's some V trains in Bambai, which we we completed last year, October 2020, and also at Heisham uh, in November 2020. That was completed as well. Uh, also some erosion protection in Inanda, uh, Inanda Comprehensive School, is, it was completed also in October 2020. And um, there's also a, a storm water upgrade at Ndombi Mbigo Street, uh, which involves the extension of a storm water pipe. But that one, I think we, we, we just have a minor, uh, uh, a shortage of funding there, but the designs and everything has been done. So as soon as we, we get the funding, we will then be able to, to move. Um, as I've said the chair earlier, that I think those are the programs for the roads, but specific program that talks to upgrading of gravel roads to, to tower will be visiting councillors and rehabilitation program as well. Uh, we, we will be prioritizing together with councillors, but there, there is a number of roads that we have upgraded in the area. There is a number of uh, storm water systems that we have update, upgraded in the area as well. So I think I think that, that's what I wanted to report on, especially in terms of what the councillor raised to say what are the programs. But as I've said, there are also maintenance programs which are ongoing programs like regraveling and portal repairs, uh, stormwater maintenance, like cleaning of drains and all that. Uh, those are ongoing programs. Uh, so I, I wouldn't want to dwell much on that, but it's ongoing programs which we do through our maintenance teams, internal teams, as well as additional resources to augment what we have if we have um, uh, serious uh, backlogs. So, so I think, Chair, I just wanted to highlight those with regard to roads and stormwater maintenance. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Tendazulu. Uh, then we need to allow the petitioners now to respond. I think I allowed members to ask questions, also allow the city to respond so that then we can 
and I believe the petitioner will be listening to the to the to the questions as raised by the members and also the responses, including the progress report that the city has provided to us this evening. Can I allow Mr. Hadewe to comment? Mr. Hadewe? Yes, Chair, is that me? No, not you, not you. I will have said Honorable Hadewe, the petitioners. Oh, okay, Chair. The Hadewe with, the, with an R, not with an H. All right. It's Thank taking you. chances. You are taking chances, Chief. No, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm alive and, and, and ready to shoot. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Mr. Hadebe? Uh, good evening, Chair. Is it possible uh, that we also see you as well? No, okay, I'll do that. I'm not sure if, 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 if can you see me now? Yes, we can. Proceed. Oh, okay. okay. And Thanks the a person lot. next to you, is she, he or she wearing a mask? Yes, yes, yes. The person next to you, is he or she wearing a mask? Because there's no social distancing there. The person on your left yes. side. Yes, uh, she's wearing a mask. No okay. Okay. She must move oh, okay. Thanks, Chair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 thanks, Chair, for the uh, opportunity. Uh, but uh, first, uh, Chair, I, I, I must start with the uh, the meeting that was held on the 16th October uh, last year. That uh, we, as the uh, um, uh, community members in uh, Bambai, we were not aware about that meeting. And uh, uh, the reason why I'm raising this issue, it is because we are the one who, for, who, who forwarded uh, the petition. Then uh, when the portfolio is uh, I think you can then switch off your microphone. My, sorry, your video. Maybe the reception will be much better. Okay. 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 Uh, yes. I wanted to start with. Uh, okay, thanks. Yes. Uh, I, I, I wanted to start with the, the meeting where the portfolio committee uh, has visited uh, 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 here in, uh, in Bambai, because we as the, the people that forwarded the, uh, the petition, we were not the part of that meeting, because uh, we, we thought that that meeting was, uh, was for the political part, because when uh, we were told, uh, we were told that, uh, uh, oh, Everyone that uh, must come to that meeting must wear, uh, wear uh, an ANC T-shirt, of which we, we were not part of that meeting. And two, when the portfolio uh, 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 committee vis uh, visited uh, the the Bambai, they were taken to a wrong uh, place because where we are staying, it's an informal uh, settlement and. Uh, People they were waiting for this uh, portfolio committee to come because they had questions uh, that they needed uh, uh, to be answered. Okay, uh, but coming back to the uh, to the respond where the CEO that was responding uh, again, chair. Uh, uh, the respond for the CEO or for the Bambai phase one. Extension. I think there is a lack of communication because we, as a members of the steering committee, we 
we are not being involved now to any development of these projects that, that are happening in the world. We, we, we are being sidelined by the municipality as well as the office of the council of laws. We as the steering committee, we, 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 we were elected democratically by the, uh, by the community and the 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 word cancellor, we wrote him a letter as well as the housing and the Etegwini municipality. But uh, what is happening lately? Uh, we know we know that there are, there are meetings that are taking place, and we as the uh, uh, project steering committee we have been sidelined. Uh, and that it is the main cause why we don't have all this information that the COO was telling uh, the, this portfolio committee about the progress that is uh, taking place now. And again, uh, when, when the COO talk about the greater amount, it's same thing applies. We, we as a uh, steering committee, we don't know anything what is going on because if, if you can look at what he, he was saying, what 52 is also uh, beneficial, beneficiaries of this uh, uh, greater amount and we don't know what is going on. And that is another part that uh, uh, I don't know if, if, if the municipality the the what council they can try to sort uh, to sort this part out because we as a project uh, steering committee at this stage we are blank we know that there there, there are meetings that are taking place uh, and we uh, we we as the project uh, steering committee we we have been sidelined and we are very much lucky today because even the chairman of the uh, steering committee is here in this meeting because before if 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 there will be a meeting that involves the, any development the office of the ward council should phone the uh, the the chairman of the project steering committee or myself and we 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 we, we, we are not getting any calls now from the ward council even from the even from the municipality side so that, uh, that is the challenge that we, we are facing. And we did try to raise uh, this issue uh, with the Ward Council as well as the, the, the mayor's office that uh, wha what is happening now, we are not getting informed because the, the, the pressure that we have as a project steering committee is that every time if the community needs something, they coming, they coming to ask, uh, ask to ask why this uh, is not happening, and if, uh, so, so we ending up not having answers for the community because we are being sidelined. And I'm saying this to you, Chair, so that uh, it, it, it can be put on record uh, 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 because this is happening for quite some time now. And that is why I've started with the meeting where the portfolio uh, committee visited the area. We were not a part of that. And, and I was surprised when I received a call, I think on Friday from Sherin saying that there, there will be a meeting because we thought maybe we are not existing in this world because we are the people that uh, we, we should respond to the community based on based on any project that is happening in the world. Again, uh, Chair, if I can come back uh, uh, to the issue of the, the, the SAPS uh, uh, mobile police station. The reason why we've raised that, it is because each and every weekend in Bambai area, people are getting killed. That is why we've raised this issue that we need a, a mobile police station that will service the community of the Pambai. Because 
there is uh, one more uh, police station, but it's very far because it, it, it's in Ward 54. And the main police station is far up uh, and it's called uh, Umjepeni police station. That is, that is why we've raised this issue of the mobile police station. Then the very same issue of the mobile police station chair, it coming back to a multi-purpose center that was supposed to be built here in Bambai because it had it has a, mo, a, a mobile police station, it has a, a, a clinic, it has a, a library, all these things that we we were asking in a petition. It is because it's there in a multi-purpose center that was supposed to be built on the 2014 year in Bambai, and there's nothing. Again, Chair, if I, I, I can come back to this issue of the word commit that are getting two salaries, it is true because there is, there is, there is road that is taking place now in Bambay and the main contract is GNS. The CLO there that was appointed by the office of the ward council, her name is Chabus Todd. And that lady, she's a word commit. And when, and if a person is being elected as a word commit, we all know that they are being told that they are not going to benefit anything from the community because they are already getting a stipend. Because there are people that are, 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 are living in the community whereby you, you, you will find out that not even a single member in a family that is working, then it's unfair for someone who's getting a stipend from the municipality, then that person being elected to be a CLO. We have raised that issue. And it's not only Jabu Stole uh, only. There is another guy who's a CLO for the housing, Pule Etama. He's also a ward commit. And he's also a, 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 a CLO for the project of housing. And so, and I'm very happy, Chair, because all these issues, the issues myself and the chairperson, uh, we, 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 we wrote a letter to the office of the ward councillor to say, people are complaining about it, this thing that is happening, that these people, they are having two salaries, whereas some other families, not even a single member that is working. Why can't one of them decide if, he want to be a what commit or he, or he want to be a, a, a CLO, then choose one of those because really it's unfair. Again, share, uh, 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 if I can come back to the issue of the, the road uh, that is uh, combining the two what, what 52 and what 57. Myself and the chairperson, we wrote a letter, we gave a letter to Jabus Tole, who is a, a, a CLO in this road, saying that people are complaining about the rate that they are paying. The rate that the, the, the GNS is paying uh, uh, the laborers here in Bambai, they were paying them 27 rand instead of 38 rand 92 cent. And that rate, it's not the rate of the 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 the, the, the Bambai. It's a rate that that was adopted by the civil and engineering. It's not our rate that we have created. It's the same issue that we 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 raised with the CLO. Then nobody took us serious. Instead, they went asking each and every worker if he or his happy. Then automatically people then they get they kept quiet. And that very same thing now, uh, yesterday, Chair, uh, three of the uh, uh, laborers were told that uh, tomorrow it's their last day. The reason why of that, it is because they are the one who forwarded this complaint to us. So now, we, 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 we and I'm happy because they are here with me, Chair. And they, they, they've shown me their payslip, the, 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 the rates that they are getting compared to what they, 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 they supposed to be getting. So again, the very same office 
of the Ward Council, identify a new steering committee for the uh, for this road, and not even a single information which was shared to us as the uh, as the project steering committee. Because our understanding is that a Ward has has got one steering committee, not two steering committees. And very funny because these, these people who were elected, they were told that they are not going to ask anything, uh, uh, or whatever that uh, the, 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 the ward councillor or the main contract is telling them, they must say yes. That is why we have been sidelined about the office of the, uh, the, the, the ward councillor, about this issue of people uh, are being underpaid by the main contract. So uh, I'm, I am not going to touch on this issue of the food parcel because when, 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 this thing, when this thing was happening, the community people came to us, then we had to go and look for the people that can come and donate. As I'm talking to you now, Chair, in Bambay, we're having a feeding scheme that is taking place on Monday, on a, and on Wednesday, through that complaint, when people complain that when it comes to food parcel, it's it, it been given to certain people, and the, all these processes are happening in night, not during the day. Uh, uh, myself and the chairman of the steering committee, we've, we've decided to go and approach a uh, business people so that they, they, they can come and assist. And the, as I'm speaking to you, now, Chair, we've got feeding scheme that is, uh, that is taking place uh, on Monday and on Wednesday. Through this complaint that was sent by the community that the food parcel are being distributed, uh, distributed to the uh, certain people. And this thing is happening at, na at night, not during the day. Uh, again, Chair, there's, there's, there's one more issue that that I need to touch on uh, that, uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, the, the, issue, the issue of Konobia. Okay. The issue of Konobia, it's a, it's, a, it's a very disturbing issue for us as the community of uh, the uh, Ed Pambay doors. I wanted to ask from the housing uh, department that when, when this project took place, how many units were set aside for each ward? Because according to our understanding, in our ward, it's only one family that benefited in Konopia ward. And even that family that benefited, we were not part of that progress because the people that were running that, that uh, uh, program with the ANC members. We, 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 we want to ask to the housing people, how many units were given to each ward? Because here in Bambai, it's only one family that benefited. And there is number of units in Konopia. And again, we don't know what is happening. And uh, again, Chair, uh, one more thing that uh, I need to uh, to ask Che uh, is that uh, we 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 visited the office of of the mayor. It was the first of the February uh, uh, this uh, this year uh, to ask about the this very. Uh, this very uh, petition, because I can still remember the last meeting, the decision that was taken is that all the stakeholders, they should go back and then uh, discuss this matter. Uh, when, we, when we visited the office of the mayor, it was the 2nd of February, and they told us that they will get back to us after two weeks. And up until today, there is no response from office of the mayor. So, and uh, it's it, it, it really uh, 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 not good for, 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 for us, Chair, because 
we, we, we thought maybe if we, if we took the matter to the office of the mayor, there will be some response. But up until today, because they said to us, after two weeks, they will, uh, they will respond back to us. Up until today, there is no communication. So if, if, if the office of the mayor and the office of the ward councillor try to communicate with us because we are the people that that, that should uh, communicate with us because without us the communication uh, chair is very bad and i i don't know what the 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 plans of the portfolio community because that visit took uh, took place on the 16th or, or, or on october uh, uh, 2020 to us, it like they, they never visited the, the, the place because the, 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 the community of the Pambai, they are still waiting for, for the portfolio community to come so that they can ask the question, so that you can see the condition that the people that they, 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 they are living, living under. Because where the meeting took place, that is another part of Pambai, and it's much better than where the people are sitting now. Because if I may put into you chair, because yesterday it was raining, people they had to, they, they had to block this thing the road because the water that that the GNS that is building, as I'm speaking to you, there is no drainage. There is the, so it, it, it the, 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 the quality of the road that GNS is building. I am not an expert, but I can tell you now, chair that this GNS contract, they don't know what they are doing. And the, we, we have been trying to talk to city engineers, to road provision, to say, please come and, uh, and intervene, because it's clear these people that they are, the, 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 the GNS contract that, that, that you guys have appointed, it's clear they, they, they they do not know what they are doing. So that is our appeal to you, Chair, and this committee to say, please, can you please arrange another visit so that you can come and see for yourself, because the condition that the people of Bambai, they are living, it's not the condition of a living person, that the condition of the Bambai uh, people are living at this stage. As I'm speaking to you now, Chair, the very same GNS, there's, uh, there's, there's uh, houses nearby the road, not even a meter away. And the, the very same thing that you, we've asked to the GNS, what if uh, 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 something happened? Because according to our understanding, we are not the experts, but you can't build a road, then next to, then a meter away from the road, there's houses because you are putting uh, people's life in danger by doing so. So it, it, it's something that I cannot explain, but I'm sure if the, 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 the portfolio committee can come and visit the place, maybe they can have a solution whereby all the, 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 the community and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the main contracts do the correct job because at this stage, what this GNS is doing, I can tell you now, Chair, they don't know what they're doing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hadere. Can we allow the, the municipality to respond to the issues as raised? COO as the team leader. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I think uh, we we really appreciate input from Postal Khatebe, the member of the community. Uh, I'm going to to basically because I have I have taken note of all the issues that Umpostol Khadewe has basically raised, we will not respond 
to uh, those that I think are the exclusive preserve of the portfolio committee uh, about the, the sufficiency of, of the visit, you, you know, uh, compared to where the meetings took place and other areas that were not covered. I, I think the chair will be able to respond to that. The, the, the issue about uh, them being sidelined uh, in, in, uh, uh, by the ward councillor, surely uh, uh, it's something that we really would like to investigate further. Uh, I think it is also linked to the question that Honorable Mkalipi also raised about the consistent engagement with the steering committee, uh, consistent engagement by the municipality. Uh, it's something that really we would like to, to, to strengthen uh, because they are <clears throat> a relevant formation at the local level which we really uh, can't do service delivery without. So we need to, to, to work together with them in this journey of improving the lives of people of Bombay. Uh, <clears throat> the issue of the police station uh, that would have been part of the MPCC that was supposed to have been built, but it was not built. Uh, <clears throat> I think our response really there <clears throat> was was uh, that that was an idea which was uh, mooted by the department of justice uh, which never really materialized but when you go to uh, sub's leadership they still do say that uh, the the um, the facilities that they have uh, in the area still are sufficient uh, we will, we will, of course, um, uh, with the guidance of the mayor and 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 the, the leadership uh, responsible for safety and security, uh, we will we will continue to engage uh, and and possibly bring along the steering committee, because if the authorities that uh, are supposed to build the facilities are saying. There's no justification for it. There's nothing much as the, the municipality that we can do except uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the leadership of the steering committee get uh, first-hand information themselves from the people that are, are raising that, that are saying they can't do anything further. Then the issue of uh, the double payment of Jabu's toll and bullet Kaman. Um, I've just I've just uh, sent this thing to now quickly uh, to Belinda. Um, I'm just going to to read very briefly her response. Um, she is not part of the meeting, but we can engage further with the uh, with the. Uh, the steering committee. She says that they may have been appointed as the CLOs. However, it is not advisable since ward committee also have an oversight role in ward projects. So uh, it looks like uh, Belinda Mklongo is basically saying we need to come close to that situation. Uh, it, 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 it really does uh, look like an anomaly uh, that we will need to look into. But of course, the office of the speaker uh, through Madame Belinda Mklongo will look into, into this quite, quite closely. <clears throat> and then on, on the issue of uh, uh, GNS, I do acknowledge that the response really fo focused on whether people were being paid or not. But I think Umpostoli is basically saying that's not what they were querying. People were being paid, but what they are saying is that they were not paid the gazetted rates. Uh, and I will request Ubaba Ukumakeba to really go and investigate that because Umpostoli is even saying he has uh, copies of the pay of the salary advice slips. 
uh, that reflect that people are being paid below the uh, the gazetted uh, 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 fees uh, by the profession. So, so, so I think we may have we may have uh, uh, bugged the wrong tree. We looked at whether people were paid or not, uh, but here the issue was that even though they were paid, but they were paid below the gazette the, the gazetted fees. So, the basic term to understand if you can please try to look at that so that we rectify it. Then the issue of uh, food parcels that are being distributed along political lines is basically disputing our reports and he says that these things are still ongoing by, by cover of darkness. Uh, if, 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 if they are still happening by cover of darkness and it is food parcel, first of all, we need to distinguish whether are those food parcels that are distributed by the city. And if they are distributed by the city, uh, why are they distributed to the communities at night? Which may suggest that there may have been some stockpiling, which is not allowed. Our processes are that we count as part of our internal controls, the number of food parcels. We, we have people that monitor the distribution, so which they should not have been an opportunity for some so I think that Madam Chairperson also warrants further investigation. The issue of how many units were set aside for each ward uh, and the issue of one family that is uh, that was only the beneficiary, I'm going to request Mr. Pacho to respond to that because it's quite specific. Uh, the issue of visiting the office of the mayor and the promise that they were going to be responded to in two weeks. Uh, up to today, there has been no response. I want to assume that we will obviously have to, to look at improving the response time. And I don't want to speak on their behalf, but there may have been a consideration that this matter is getting attention uh, uh, through this process. Uh, but uh, going forward, really, uh, we, we would like to ensure that once we promise a time frame, of responding to the people, we must really try to ensure that we do that. Um, the issue of the visit of the 26th of October, I said that one, we are going uh, to leave it to uh, the members of the portfolio committee to decide on. Uh, when he does have information readily available at hand to also comment on the issue of the GMS contractor, and the issues of poor workmanship, the, the monitoring that they do, uh, just to close uh, the loop. So, so it's a question of uh, Mr. Pato, the allocation per ward for the ward surrounding Econubia, and then um, uh, uh, but to just basically look at the issue of GNS contractors workmanship. Um, unless if you are saying it's something that you cannot comment without having looked at uh, thoroughly by site visit and listening to what Umpo story is saying, I would be happy with that kind of response. But if you still want to say something through Madam Chairperson, I really would like you to respond as part of the city's responses. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Who is Umma Geva? The clinic. Uh, yes, Umdwana, Madam Chairperson, Umdwana, Oawa Nongom, Echalangos, Esizueni, Ekayadit. Oh, okay. Tandazu. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. We keep on learning something every day. That's why. Mr. Zulu? Chair, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I want to I want to agree with the COO chair to say maybe let me be given time to just go and, and, and check exactly because I see Umpo story is saying he, he even called uh, our teams from Rose Provision to come and do uh, those uh, side visits. Uh, I think that, that was the proper way of doing it. Because if, if committee members are, are raising issues, 
And I think we have a responsibility to go on the ground and then see what is happening so that we can then advise correctly. Uh, I will I will then respond as part of city's response, but I will, I will I will make time go there and see exactly what is happening together with the issue of the underpayment of of of, of the employees there, chair. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. What deadline are you committing to? Uh, chair, today is what? It's Wednesday. Is it yes. Wednesday? Mm. Yeah. Chair, I think let me give myself um, until next week, Wednesday. I would have gone there, Chair. And then you'll present the report to the committee secretary by Thursday next week. Yes. yes. On, the, on your findings and the, yes. and the, the recommendation on what needs to be done with clear Correct. timelines Correct. to resolve the issues. Correct. Can we Correct. agree along that line? Agreed, Chair. Agreed. Thank you. That was all. Okay. The speaker, do you want to say something? Because seemingly, yeah, uh, Madam Speaker, it's a clear indication of a councillor who's not Thank who is you. not a uh, meeting with the various section of the community in the what. Thank you very much. Yes, Chair. I want you um, to comment on this matter, uh, Madam Speaker. Yes, proceed. Let's see you now. Are you? Oh, remember last yes. time you said whether you should switch on your video. I... Okay. Good. You can proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. And um, thank you to the honorable members for their comment. Thank you very much, um, Chair. I was saying I've, I've noted the concerns and the issues raised by, by, by the honorable members. For an example, the details that they want, for an example, the details of uh, the functional uh, ward committees. We will provide that uh, that detail and all the other issues that we raised. Uh, we'll sit down together with the officials to look at the issues. And I've also listened to Umpostol, um, uh, one of the petitioners. Uh, all the issues that uh, he's being sidelined. I think it's important that we work on the relationship between them, the project steering committee and the councillor, because it's not going to be good for, for a relationship that has to give a service to people to give a service to, to the community, but they don't have a good working relationship. We will definitely work on that issue. And we'll also um, talk to the mayor about the meeting with the with the steering project steering committee and the responses that they wanted. I have listened to all the issues, like the issues of board committee members that are getting pay, uh, that are working in in the in the projects in the in the ward. And also, I also want to investigate the issue of the food hampers that were delivered. And I think it's important that we note that the food hampers that were delivered, uh, were distributed last year as a relief, COVID relief program, there were only a thousand. And we have received a report from all the ward, most of the ward councillors. We investigate if Ward 52 has also brought the report back to us who has received the food hampers. And recently we've given about 600 uh, for each ward, 600 food vouchers, this time not food hampers. We'll also investigate because we had asked the ward councillors to work with ward committees and ensure that each, 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 each uh, voting district, there are people who benefit from, from the programs. But we must also remember that during the COVID, at, at the early stages of COVID, Councillors would go out and, and look for donations as well. So we might also uh, hear that the councillor has also gone out to look for donations. But we had requested that 
if they did get donations, they had to report to the disaster management center so that we are aware of what is coming to all the wards. Uh, otherwise, um, chairperson uh, will sit down and, and look at all the issues and respond uh, urgently. Maybe give us a week, we will respond and send to your secretary the responses from, from us what, and what actions are going to be taken. Okay, thank you, Councillor Tusi, the Speaker of Etiquin Metro. Can we agree, uh, Madam Speaker, that let's get that comprehensive uh, report uh, on Thursday together with the one from uh, uh, Mr. Tendazulu? The week as well. From yes, now. we will. Is that amenable? Yes, we will. Yes. Then I should think out of this also, there should be lessons learned. Uh, uh, when uh, what councillors are elected, they represent everybody because I, 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 the, the sense that I'm getting like a section of the community that is being serviced by this word councillor. We also witnessed it during our oversight visit. Unfortunately, uh, to respond on the issue of us going back there, it's highly improbable for us to go back there because what we are doing here is part of, 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 of our oversight visit because that, that petition of yours is not lost. We've seen the area, we've been there. Somebody took us through the places, the issues that you're talking about. We've seen them ourselves during that time because we started the, though the meeting was a, put on a different venue. And even when we arrived at the different venue, we explained ourselves in the opposition to that effect. To say, no, 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 we're not supposed to be near. But like we said, speaker, we normally ask the councillors in good faith that it's their area then they will uh, then mobilize people because what we found in that meeting, as I said in my opening remarks, it was a group of people who were then attacking the, the petitioners. Why did they petition? Uh, to petition, it doesn't mean that you are attacking somebody in charge. You just want somebody to take accountability and responsibility in their area of work. And that is uh, provided for in the constitution of this country, including the rules of parliament. So those are some of the issues that we find out that you say, I think then the councillor there didn't uh, do what was expected from him on our, on our part, because we found wrong people, not the petitioners. But I should assure the petitioners, because now I'm looking at the time now we are becoming counterproductive to say to them, this is the matter that is ongoing and it doesn't need a parliament for you to talk to your leaders in the municipality. But I should think also now that there is this communication you will continue to engage with the municipality. The speaker is here. You can talk to her through the office. She'll make sure whoever is assigned to do the work or service, you will do what is expected of them. But it's a way of, it's a matter of way forward because we also need to report back to the office of the speaker. We'll await such feedback reports by Thursday as uh, committed by yourselves as the municipality. Uh, we have heard your commitment CEO on these matters. Like I said, these matters were not supposed to come to parliament. These are the matters that you are do with. You should have dealt them with, with them there, down there. I think out of this petition also, it also give you the opportunity as a municipality to go and revisit your system. There's somebody responsible for public participation. Is your public participation actually working? If you will have instances of this nature, wherein you've got a group of dissatisfied uh, community members, then at least well, they are better off because they know what to do. Think about the other communities in your area, they who don't know what to do. 
And then at the end of the day, it will just be the outcry that this council is not servicing us. And the other issue also to say how effective is your public participation programs. Because if indeed somebody is a ward committee member and also appointed in the steering committee CEO, and then we got that feedback from Belinda to say that was not supposed to have happened, but it's, it has happened. We must take responsibility. Normally we know that the ward councillors are the ones that facilitate the appointment of these people. How did then that ward councillor miss such important critical a, 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 a stage to weigh in then somebody who's already a, a ward committee member is also appointed in the steering committee. So that those are the level of the accountability level to say then, uh, as we had an engagement with Salga yesterday, they were telling us that they are going to, to train councillors on their roles and whatever, but we are now at the end of the term, we find the councillor who does that. That, that. Those are some of the issues that we need to seriously lead because when you govern, you don't govern a section of the community. You govern all the citizens that are within that particular community. So th those are the things that one, as we move forward, uh, we need to then follow up. I should think uh, the MEC for Human Settlement, though he's told me he was leaving, he has left somebody. I think we'll also want him to also comment on this human settlement matters. Lawrence, you are still here. Yes, the issues are raised there, but purely solely the, if this they belong to the municipality, I think a collaborative uh, effort to resolve these issues because I believe you are the ones that is responsible for the funding for human settlements in, in the in the municipalities. Then these are the issues that will continue to follow up, colleagues. We'll have to follow it up, and then we hope the colleagues from the city will. Uh, then stick to their commitment that by Thursday they're going to give us a, a they're going to give us something tangible. The speaker, as and when we we close when we were, while we were there as well, there was the issue that uh, traditional uh, leaders raised around their issue of around their participation in municipal uh, councils. Uh, the, the, then uh, some were claiming that they were, they were not invited to your council. What has been the progress to that effect? Because we know the MEC determines which uh, traditional leaders must sit in those councils. And we know that uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's no uniformity how this thing is done, either in provinces, even in council, in some councils. So those are the issues that we, we then felt that, can you say that in terms of section 81 in your municipality, Madam Speaker, all designated traditional leaders are attending the meetings as designated or is the other issue? Because they also raised, as we met with them, they couldn't even understand what will be their role on, on this district development model. We know as a queen, you are one of the pilots. We've agreed that in the near future, you need to come and brief us as a committee. We've got a presentations from the department itself, but I think we said in future, as we go to the next term, yourselves as been, who are pilots, you need to come and brief us on the impact of this program as well. I should think then as and when you come then on that particular date, you will also have to talk to the issue of the traditional leadership participation. But I think for now, on them participating in the activities of council, I can give you two minutes to talk to that Madam Speaker, so that we know that we've closed that matter of their participation in council, uh, council Tosi. Thank you very much, Chair. Traditional leaders are invited to council. They do come to council. Some of them do come. And we also get involved when they do have their sittings in Pine Town. They also serve in the different committees that we have. In the, like in the DDM, they're supposed to be there. The, the district um, command council, uh, the chair of, of, of the traditional leaders in the district, uh, in the metro. 
is, is attends those meetings sometimes, but sometimes is unable and has problems to connect. But we do invite them to councils, council meetings. You're muted, Chair. It's 20 to 11. Honorable Mukalipi, you mustn't be long. We must be out of here by quarter two. Tomorrow is another night. Can I allow you to do that one follow up? No, Chair, I won't be long. I just want to get a clarity because one of the issues that were raised by Umpostoli here. I'm not sure if it's covered in terms of what Mr. Tandazulu is going to finish this committee on by this day. The issue of workers who have been <clears throat> uh, fired on the basis that they are the one who wrote a petition against what is happening according to Umpostoli in that project. So I wanted to double check on that one, Chairperson. Secondly, I just I want to... Sorry? On that one, he said the matter is also going to investigate and give us feedback on that one. Yes, Chair. Second one. So the, second, the second one is the response from oh, Mr. Pato, which was very in details, and one must also appreciate the that response from oh, Mr. Pato in regards to the way forward in terms of between the mean uh, the MECs, the former MEC of housing and the city in terms of how to address the issue of Brooks Farm. So therefore, when I was listening to him. He said that he still they have put a submission of which they don't know when are they going to receive a feedback. So if we can also be um, updated in that regard in order for, for the community of Brooks Farm, especially those people to, to, to know or to there's something that has been done. Because after that community meeting, when they call the community meeting, so there is no follow up in that regard and the community is not aware in terms of the way forward. Those are the two issues, Chairperson. I think, uh, Mr. Lawrence Pato, you need to follow up on that submission and you'll package it as part of the response for next week Thursday. Because Thank I think uh, having listened to your MEC before he left here, he, he, he has given us some commitment. So you must raise with him tomorrow as you go to the office check the whereabouts of this submission so that you make sure that it's processed and finalized so that it forms part of the feedback that is to be submitted to us on this day. I see your microphone is on. Uh, Lawrence, you can also respond to that effect. Thanks, Madam Chair. I've, I've taken note of, of that one, Madam Chair. It would be obviously part of, of my response. Uh, I'll follow it up with the provincial guys and see how far has it gone, the submission in terms of the approval process, and then respond accordingly. Yes. Also, uh, one Matunsi has written here on the chat group that uh, as the MEC before he left, he told us he's leaving Matunsi here. Matons is committing that he's gonna make sure that he assists you, Lawrence, so that by Thursday, that matter is also packaged from your side, from human settlement. So we love that commitment. Uh, colleagues, these matters are ongoing. I must say that whenever we meet with the city to assure our petitioners, whenever we meet with the cities will be depending on the type of feedback that they're going to give us next week Thursday. This is the matter that we will uh, continue to follow up. Uh, so I, I can assure you that this is the matter that we're going to follow up until we find closure on this matters. We'll follow it up. Uh, you've got MPs, MPLs deployed there. I'm gonna also be talking to my counterpart, the chairperson of the portfolio committee in the province of KZN so that they can also assist us to follow up these matters because they are there. So this is how we are going to deal with these matters. We're going to continue to interact with you on this matter. Let's await the feedback, but I am glad and happy that 
there's commitment on the side of the municipality. More so, the speaker is chairperson of council is here. Also, councillor Savel, you are the portfolio head. I should think it's the same commitment that you are going to address these matters because I think it's in the best interest of the municipality to have happy citizens. So I want to then close this meeting by thanking all of you, uh, Madam Speaker and the team, uh, the portfolio head, Councillor Savello, and the COOO and the entire management team from the municipality to thank the colleagues from the Department of Human Settlement. I called the colleagues from Cocta Emia. Nobody responded. Maybe I'll presume there's no one from the Cocta portfolio. I saw in the gadget some people who were written Cocta, but when I called their names and wanted them to comment, they never commented. So I don't know what was happening. But then let's then thank uh, the colleagues uh, from the Department of Cocta Nationally. I see Dr. Ntashe and others are still here with us. Umam Kwena, they are still with us, Bob Ryan. We want to thank you as well for being the regular attendees, I hope. Also as a Department of Cocta Nationally, these are the matters that you also have interest to follow up through your employees in these provinces. And that's the feedback that we also want to, to, to hear from your good self as the department, Dr. Nkashe and the team. Then to also thank you colleagues. Yes, uh, I was told uh, there are people in Twitter complaining that uh, we are meeting, why are we meeting so late in the night? But you remember, this is what we agreed we were going to do during the day. We do our constituency work, try to push the work that uh, we have been doing. You've heard what the IEC and the department were telling us yesterday. So let's try to see how far do we go. That's why I'm trying my level best. Even when we're late, this meeting don't go beyond quarter to 11. So that we are again fresh tomorrow morning to be able to do the constituency work and still come back in the evening because we have matters tomorrow that we are going to deal with as well tomorrow. So let me end this meeting here to thank all of you colleagues for your time. You must have a good night. I'm, I'm, I don't want you to go to the morning. You must sleep while it's still uh, tonight. Good night colleagues, the meeting gets urgent. Thank you so much. Good evening, Chair. Thank, Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, very much, Chair. Your message is good. Rally Wom Rudy, Dr. Nkasa. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Good night.